All right. So while Ben's eating, I'm going to show you what I'm doing to my motorcycle. So this is my current motorcycle. Okay. That's just a stock road glide ST. That's what I have right now. Okay. I'm transforming it eventually into something like this. Well, that's pretty cool. So it'll have like the extra chin spoiler here. I already got the exhaust is going on. My exhaust is a little nicer than this. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I got the carbon fiber fenders, carbon fiber side plates. I got a new seat uh, and I got a carbon fiber. Are you fiber. doing it? Sorry. No, go Are ahead. you doing it in that, um, in that colorway, in that gray with the, the gold? Well, because my, I don't, well, my, my wheels, like when they come, they cut like, so back to the stock one, they already come yeah. in, they already come in bronze. Gotcha. So I'm going to leave the bronze and, uh, like I said, I, this fender now is carbon fiber. The back fender is carbon. So this guy did his whole bike in carbon fiber, but I pretty much have a lot of the same parts that are on here. I have, I bought these headlights. I got this, uh, clear air breather. Pretty mm -hmm. much, pretty much have the same seat. So like, it's going to look something like this, but in gray. Um, I'm pretty fucking excited though. So they're yeah, trying to, nice. they're trying to talk me into, so this bike comes with a 117, right? They're trying mm -hmm. to talk, they're trying to talk me into doing the 131 kit engine on it, which would basically. Why wouldn't you? We already know you are. Okay. We've, we 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 know this exactly. Okay. You're gonna get the biggest fucking engine. Just, so, just, it's not the biggest. Are. It's not the biggest. There's like a 35 and a 45, but the 131 kit will add like 40 horsepower. And then imagine if you don't get it, you can be mad. You you're well. I'm gonna this. I'm gonna wait to see what the bike feels and looks like. Just with this first transformation, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you what it's going to feel and look like. It's going to feel slower than the bigger one. <laughs> Just letting you know right now, it's, and you're going to sit on it and you're going to go, "This feels great." Imagine what that extra forty horsepower feels like. You can't. You're never going to run away from that. It's quite a bit of money. I don't want to fucking just throw it away. You're not throwing it away. You're investing it into more fun. Well, I'll tell you the one thing about motorcycles that I found really interesting is, like you know, I've modified all my trucks and shit. When you, yeah. modify, when you modify a truck, if you take like an F-250 and you modify it, put big wheels on it and lifts and all that shit, you lose all that money. It actually devalues the truck because mm -hmm. most most people don't want a lifted fucking truck. So you end up just losing the 20 grand or whatever the fuck you put into it. The nice thing about motorcycles is you get all the money back because the way Harley sells their motorcycles is they basically sell them as like a base. You just like... They sell it yeah. with the shitty exhaust and the fucking... Yeah, yeah, you have to change that exhaust yeah. pipe instead yeah. the first thing. Yeah, so I think usually what I've seen online when I look at used motorcycles is when they have all that stuff done to them, it just increases the value. So I don't think I'll lose the money. I think I'll be able to sell the bike for more uh, when I do finally get rid of it. But I just... It's like a... That 131 is like a $7,500 investment. And I will... I will, I, I will get it back. I just... <sighs> So what's well, being cheap for then? <laughs> <laughs> Got to put money back into the business, Ben. I can't just keep fucking buying motorcycle parts. Says plus, who? Plus, oh, your, plus, your wife. Plus. Your wife says you can't. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't. No, she does not, actually. Uh, I had to give you a raise. That took all my money. I did all of your money. There was more in the pot. <laughs> I didn't even... <laughs> we I didn't mean... even... We did... Wait, wait, wait. We didn't even negotiate. Yeah, you didn't want money. I could have got. I could have. I could have got more. No, you, you said you lowball. You always lowball. So I. I you took the low you ball you down. asked for nothing, and I said you have to take money. What's going on, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, and if you go to manscaped.com forward slash rbp, you can get twenty percent off and free shipping on their new beard kit that I'm going to show you. Check this out. So you get all this cool stuff in the beard kit. I'm going to show you each piece one by one. First of all, the most important part is you get the beard trimmer itself. Now, the cool thing is you don't get a ton of these attachments like with every other beard trimmer. You lose half of them. This one, you can set the beard trimmer length with this dial. So you just have the one guard to worry about, which is beautiful because I always lose these. You can get go to new, new beard kit, click on that. 
It'll show you exactly what you get. You get the scissors, you get the brush, you get all this stuff in the beard kit for $139, but you save 20% plus you get free shipping. So make sure you go to manscaped.com forward slash RBP or use code RBP at checkout to get the discount plus the free shipping. Guys, you won't regret it. This beard trimmer with the dial on here so you don't have all the attachments is absolutely wonderful. Right? <laughs> You said I'll work for free, and I said no. You I, have to whoa, 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 whoa! Free isn't. <laughs> I gave you a raise, and I had to give Justin a raise, and I had to give Samson a raise. So I can't afford bike parts now because of you guys, you fuckers. No, uh, I don't know. I might do it. We'll see. We'll see. It's it's uh because I got the low rider too, right? So I thought I'd do the one thirty one in the low rider, and that would be a rocket ship. Yeah. Because if you do the if you, if I put the one thirty one in a low rider, then it's like almost sport bike fast. I'm telling you, no, I'm no, telling, no. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm there's gonna be people. There's gonna be sport bike riders here, and I'm gonna represent them now. Shut the fuck up. It's gonna be nowhere near it. Fuck off. I'm telling fuck you. off. I'm telling you. It's not. No. Actually- that, okay. All right. Tell you what that is. That's like taking a chick, strapping a dick on it, and be like, it's a fella now. It's not. No. It's still no. Not. It's, it's not the same. Still not. You're- you know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like taking a TRX. It's like taking a Dodge Ram and putting a fucking, put 700 horse in it. And it's like as fast as a sports car. Really? You're going to stick to that? That's Well, it's not, listen, it. It, it, I'm not saying a TRX is faster than a Ferrari, but it will beat like 95% of cars on the road. An old shitty beat up sports no. car from the, 90, <laughs> from the 1980s. <laughs> you could... You could destroy, listen, my Corvette, my Corvette was a zero to 60 in like 3.3 seconds. The TRX is a zero to 60 in like just under four. It's not that much slower. Okay, now put now put the cup around the corner, see what happens. Wait, it's I'm not, not talking about, I'm not talking about on a track. I'm talking about like light to light. Okay, light to light, I promise you. You put that 31 in, no, you put that next to an R1 and the R1 is going to, yeah, but the R okay, but, but wait a minute. The R one is like the peak of fucking sport bikes almost. Mm, I wouldn't call it a hyper bike. No, There's but it's in, but it's in the but it's in the top like if you take a stock R one, that's like a stock Aston or Porsche, right? Yeah. But if yeah, you but a stock nine eleven turbo, like a stock Porsche nine eleven turbo will beat almost anything on the road. Light to light. Yeah, and the TRX wouldn't keep up with the Porsche. Yeah, but you're so. saying you're saying like an R1, and I'm saying yeah, that's the that's like the that's like the 911 turbo of motorcycles. But I'm saying most other sport bikes aren't that fast. Oh, I mean, I, look, if we got a bet on it, I'm sitting my ass on a sport bike over your souped up Harley. Just saying. <laughs> But how cool would it, a... <laughs> but how cool would it be if you rolled up in a Harley and it was like way faster than the guy expected? Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be like uh Happy Gilmore's Loma. Let's, let's see what the zero to sixty is if I can find it. Let's see here. I actually really want to get a um the cafe racer, the BMW nine R. Oh, R9T. Oh. oh, I changed my mind, Ben. Why is it slow? It's slow, isn't it? I fucking I gotta, told you. I got to cut that whole part out now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on north to 60 and what, five? <laughs> no. <Six. laughs> Fuck. Hi, James. How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I was a few minutes late. The traffic around here lately is shit. And the weather's really bad. And Ben will tell you, British people, when they're driving, are very scared of the road. Do you, yeah. do you... Do oh, I? this no, is this is, this is this is dog shit. Yeah, mm. I can walk faster than that. <laughs> Motorcycle. Put, put it on, on my back, and I put it on my back, and I'll run there with it on me. <laughs> Fucking four, four and point, a half. Four point four seconds. Fuck. No, and, and that's with some little whippet that weighs one hundred and fifty pounds. Not your fat ass on it. No way. <laughs> hey, it's a muscular <laughs> ass. It's not fat. <laughs> <clears throat> fastest zero to 60 motorcycle is a Ducati Diablo at 2.5 to 2.8 seconds. Wow. It's double the f- fucking speed. 
Jeez, I looked at this BMW. Uh, I don't even. I don't at... even consider the Diablo. Yeah, but that's the that's the S one thousand R. Dude, that's a. Wet oh, but uh, James, you got to see this. I want to see if you like it. I'm like well out of my zone right now. <laughs> I, I know you are. I know. I know. Like, no, no, no. But, but, you, uh, but you no, James, show me. James, show me. Get James, me in the zone. James, James, you know Barry Pitts. He's got one of these. What oh, do you okay, think? Okay. What do you think of this? You like the look it's of that? Nice. It's a thousand um, horsepower. Is it? I don't know the horsepower of it. I don't know if that's what, what the thousand stands for. No, no, no. That... Thousand the engine. Um, it's. I think it's around. Like, it'll be high hundreds or like low two hundreds horsepower. So, so wait, 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 wait. If a bike, if, if a bike's a thousand cc, oh cc, cc. Yeah, I was gonna say you can't have a. If there's a thousand horsepower, you'd fucking die. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I. You know, it um, has to be ten vehicles. Okay, but this is the problem with this, Ben. So it's absolutely beautiful, right? But look is what it? this. No, well, look, no, it's look, it's look stock. What, it, it's stock. So no, all that is stock. So you're just now comparing it to the same stock glides and lowriders that you just showed me. Wait it's a minute. Stock. That's here... stock. It looks like shit. Okay, I think this is beautiful, right? Nah. But, but What's this the is... stabilizer. Is that at the back just to show it so it can stand up? Right? Yeah, that's a, that's the stand. Yeah, just, just to hold just, it up. Just, yeah, just yeah, you can't, right. yeah, you can't ride Imagine... it. Imagine. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> don't go very far, James. This is for beginners. It's like uh, training that... wheels. That's what I would have <laughs> forever. Forever. So, no, but this is the problem, Ben. Look how big this fucking guy looks on it. He does look Yeah, big. but he might be set it might be Martin Ford, and so you don't know. I'm just saying, like, that's why I don't buy a sport bike, because it just looks like I would look too big on it. It would look fucking stupid. Not that bit you're not that big anymore, mate. Yeah, not that big. <laughs> Still two sixty, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. I would trust me, I, I would trust I, me, I wish it, I was smaller because I want to buy a bike like that. There's a custom bike I was looking at getting. Type in this. So BM, just one last one, and then we'll fuck bikes off. Okay, go so ahead. So type in BMW. Yep. R9T. Yep. Fury. Fury. I can get. Yeah, Fury. I have to. I would have to commission it to get built, and it's about forty-five grand. Ben, you can't. Look, you dude, you're gonna look, look like. I just, told you how bad you're gonna look on this already. Just look at it. Just. James, look how stupid Ben would look on this bike. Where's the seat? It don't look like he's got a seat. I'm like, where is the seat? Look at that fucking... Look, click on the top right. Is that a good-looking bike? Look, wait, that? wait, wait. Look at that. Okay, I love it. It's absolutely amazing. But look at... Like, you're going to look like a fucking ape on this thing. I look like an yeah. ape off the thing anyway. Okay. You're going to be... How it feels like. You're too worried about what other people will think of you. No, Fuck I don't want to... I don't right. want to look like a dork on a fucking bike. It's, like, way too small for me. It's not you it looks, I think it's probably quite a big bike, actually. That surely. No, it's not. Is it not? Watch. It looks, we'll quite, it looks, it looks quite chunky. Look at this guy. This guy's weigh, weighs like 130 pounds. Well, yeah, to be fair. Look how small the bike looks yeah, on. Him. Ben, you're way too big for that <laughs> shit. Bro. I'm on a, I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet. <laughs> you know. There's no fucking way, dude. There's like. I'm gonna get one now, just because you told me no way. Good. <laughs> we do. I'll make fun of you the whole time. <laughs> Okay. See, right. they, look how happy they look, though. You see how happy those two I'll guys I'll be just as that? happy on my fucking road glide. I don't care. And I'll have my I'll have bags, and I'll have, like, my stuff in the back, and you'll have nowhere to put your stuff. True. True. See? Yeah, but, yeah, but I'll get there faster, not four and a half fucking seconds. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, James, how are you? Sorry, man. We're talking cars and bikes. No, and dude, I, pre I like it when people just go off about what they enjoy, because that's, we... that's what life's about. People in the comments section are gonna freak out though because I just said that Harley. Could... You know why I said that? I'll tell you why. And it's what did you say? Wait, 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 wait! You didn't tell me what you said. So I was thinking about upgrading <laughs> upgrading the engine in my Harley, and yeah, okay, okay. I was like, it'll probably be as fast as a sports bike. And Ben lost it, like, and I can only imagine all the people at home losing it. At the same yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Any bike connoisseurs out there? They're like, what are you on about? But I will say it's not my fault. So, admittedly, I don't know everything about bikes. I just started riding last year. Yeah. So when I was at the Harley dealership, I asked them, I said, hey, if I do the 131, how fast is it going to be? Like, am I in sport bike territory? And they're like, close. They're like, not like, you know, it won't be as fast, but it'd be close. Fucking close. You'll be on the same tarmac. That's about it. That's as close as so, you're going to get. So then I look it up. So so I repeat this to Ben today. And and he's ben, like, what the fuck are you on about? And ben shits on me. And then we look it up and I'm like, oh, fuck. They tried to just, they told me the, yeah. they told me the false they're just yeah. trying to sell me the fucking engine. Absolutely. What they should have done was they should have tried my sales tactic, which is they'll be both slow, but you're going to know that one is slower than the other one. What does that like, mean? 
if you get it, the oh, is it the one fourteen? I have a one seventeen now. Yeah, yeah, one seventeen. Sorry. Okay, if you stay with the one seventeen, you're gonna know. Even though they're both slow, it's slower than the one thirty one. That's all you're gonna have to live with. And I just plant that seed and let you fucking marinate on it. I'll tell you the nice thing about the motorcycle. I know how fast I've gone on it and I feel more comfortable because after talking to like you and talking to Chris Tuttle, Chris, Chris Tuttle rode, rode sport bikes for a long time. Mot mot motocross, yeah. Yeah, and he did oh. stunt, stunt riding and shit. And so he told me, he's like, look, if you're the kind of guy that likes to go fast, you might want to you might want to think it over because you're not going to be able to have that speed and not use it. Mm. And I think that's that's kind of how I am. Like I think if I had a bike that went that fast, I would want to like mm. go that fast. I, it's a, there's a I I have my R1 and I need to work on it. So I was going to the shop and they gave me a curtsy bike, right? And they gave me this 50 cc scooter. Oh my yeah. god! From that to that, yeah, I had so much fun on that fucking thing because all I could do was just, just fucking it rip way, it. Yeah. I was like yeah. that. I was yeah. like going around corners like with the full throttle, going, "This is amazing." Yeah. But yeah. then yeah. my R1, I would break my fucking neck. That's of right. Course. That's right. And that's what, and I actually asked Justin about that too, because Justin's ridden all kinds of bikes. And Justin was like, look, you know, because we went riding on the Harleys together and we had some fun. And he's like, look, the, what we did on the Harleys is fun, but he's like, he's like, I actually get a little bit scared when I'm on a sport bike. Okay. So I get, so, I, I'm the other way. I get bored on a Harley. Yeah. And I have fun on a sport. Like, I'm like, this is what it's meant to be. And I, how you drive a car. Yeah. How I ride a sport bike. Yeah, but that's what I'm worried about is I think I would ride a sport bike yeah. when I drive a car and I would end up dead. Yeah, maybe so, you need to be a bit more mindful of how much power you put under your ass. That's why I want to just keep the Harley the way it is because it's, <laughs> it's fun, but it's not like I don't think it's going to kill me, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that sounds that sounds sensible to me as a friend of yours that doesn't want you to perish prematurely from a bike accident. You know? <laughs> but if so, I could choose a way to go, not knock on wood. There is, there is that. There is that. You'd have to make sure you really, really crank it because you've got to go. If you're going, you're going at full speed. Otherwise, it wasn't worth. Can it. I? Can I just make one request? Yeah. If you ever do decide to get a sport or go ride one, I'm with you. Yeah. Just to keep an eye. I want to. I want. No. Oh, oh you want to? You want to be there with me when we do it? I just want to have fun. Oh, okay. I thought you'd be like the responsible friend. No, <laughs> no. James, I used to ride to the gym from with Barry, and we'd leave yeah. the gym. Well, mate, we had such, so much fun. Like, Oh yeah, I bet and you probably really mucking each other off as well. I bet you probably mucking each other off like, "I'll oh, get there quick." Oh, fuck you. I would. No, I was a. I was kind of a newbie, and he was very experienced, and he yeah. can fucking handle. He, like he does track days, so he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's he been riding. Right, he gets. Like, he goes down like literally. Yeah. He, well, he's been riding a sports bike since he was like eighteen, and takes him to the track. He doesn't really. He only got his driving license when he was like thirty-four, like mm -hmm. for a car. So he can fucking yeah. Fucking, I feel like because this is a bodybuilding podcast never tried as well. As well, I feel like we have to highlight Barry's a good bodybuilder as well. He's won quite a few shows. Was well, a good bodybuilder. He's a lazy fuck. Yeah. Won't get back on stage again. The print. I, I will say I was there when he won the two thousand and I think it was eleven or twelve uh, Nabar Londons. So I was there. Yeah, I, what I mean, is it's it? Yeah, great, great muscle bellies. Yeah. What is it with bodybuilders and risking their lives? I don't know because we just like to. We're not very. Limits, we're not very. People, we're not very sensible we? people. Well, we are, but we're bored. We we get bored very easily. Is that what it is? Yeah, we need a high. Like we need to, like have something that gives us the same thrill as yeah, but pushing your body to the limit. But at the same time, James, bodybuilding life is so fucking mundane. It is, but when you're in the gym, it's not. Yeah, I guess you, you know, have it. Yeah, you know, when you get under that, like you're still squatting now, mate, and you know that yeah. you you don't have to, but you do. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah you put yeah. them, you put them worker boots on, you get under the bar, and you go because there's that thrill. <laughs> worker boots. You do. You do. You know, what, even... you know, you know why I wear those boots. I don't because it's just ease of putting them on and off because they don't. That's right. Don't that's up. why. That's why. Because people are like, why are you wearing boots? It's summer. It's like warm now. I'm like, just slip them on. They're like, it's like JP wearing the, the it, same, same principle. Yeah. yeah I don't want to put shoes on. So I just yeah. drop, my, drop my feet into them. The tongue just sits forward. There's loads of room. Foot yeah. just goes straight in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm the same. I, I have the time I don't un, I do up my under armors. Just put them on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question. Yeah. And I know it's a bad question, but I want to ask it anyway. If you could choose any which way to go, what are your top three choices? It's got to be like, maybe like wild orgasm and you have a heart attack. <laughs> I didn't even think like, of that. <laughs> like Hugh, Hugh, Hefner, Hugh Hefner style. Yeah, it has to be literally like down. looking in the eyes of the person you love, bolting your load, and then go, 
Yeah, but think oh. about how bad it is for the person, though. That would be she's, horrible no, for your partner. She, it would, but at the same time, it's still her, it's a send off present. Like in her eyes, Ben, you kind of the, you, you kind of the, the win win is if you're someone like Hefner, yeah, who's like kind wedged, of wedged, and she's going to inherit it all, and she's like knocking you off, you bolt, sack <laughs> it in, and she's like, oh, he died, but I'm rich. I think it's it's probably the most loving way to go. I didn't even think of the sex the sex angle. Fuck, I'm so maybe I'm I need more test. Um, I've, I, that's the saddest way to go would be like Pompeii, wouldn't it? You know, like like hugging the person over the volcano, just going to... and then you're like, <laughs> what? That one just that always upsets me. <laughs> the thought of that one. So you're on a volcano? No, in like vol- you're in an area where there is volcanic activity, and like your the town just gets absolutely engulfed in. The volcano. Yeah, you know, you know it's coming, and you can't get out. Because that's right? what happened with the city of Pompeii, yeah. didn't it? Pompeii was, you know, yeah. I don't know how we got to Pompeii, but yeah, or like, a, or, like a, or like a tsunami, and you know it's coming, and there's nothing. Like... Tsunamis are a weird one, yeah, because I, I I know that like I've got no under comprehension of. I've seen some footage when you see someone on a rooftop filming that tsunami just ripping the whole country apart. Yeah, the, the the untrained head that doesn't understand a tsunami, you think, oh, it's just water. I'll just swim when it comes. No, well, it, it, yeah, I know, I know, I, and it does not work like that at all. Yeah. That shit is like the ocean is literally engulfing your country. I wouldn't be thinking of swimming. I would be like, what's the highest fucking point I can get to and just stay Mountain there. Top. Mountain yeah, top. Yeah. I said to you, I had a dream. Do you know what I said? Because I, I had a dream the other night. I had a dream the other night that there was vo- volcanic lava everywhere and I was trying to get to the highest point. So maybe what that's is- why I mentioned Pompeii. What's with you? Are you playing video games with lava in them right now? No, no, none. None at all. None what is at all. your. I don't know what that was. Are you watching documentaries with volcanoes? No, you would have thought I've watched like old Dante's Peak or something, but no, I haven't. <laughs> <Dante's> <laughs> that's the... I, was, I was sitting there going, what's that film? What's that film? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know why. I just had a random dream the other night where. I was looking, there was like molten lava around me everywhere, and I was just looking for which way to go, and I was basically running from it. So it's probably some symbolic. Dream. I was thinking my top three. So that way, what what did you say? You said just fucking during, and dying. Yeah, during, yeah, when you're like. Okay, what's two, what's two and three? <laughs> um, I don't, everything else is rank. I, I, so I don't I'm think thinking, nice. So I was thinking in my sleep would be one. Having a good dream. Like, just like you're you're already asleep. So that's like what, you know. You're already yeah. asleep. Yeah. Two would be on a bike. Three would be in the gym. I don't know about gonna, any I, every scenario I'm for gonna, me feels bad unless I'm having sex. I'm gonna bail out of <laughs> I'm gonna bail out of the motorbike one because I've I give no, this I Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's too close yeah. to too close to home. Yeah. This one's a bit I'm close to right. home. No thanks. That's why I feel yeah. like everything's too close to home. That's why I feel like the only one is Yeah, that. but I just I'm picking things that I think Okay, well, at least I died having fun. That's kind of how I think of it. Not the sleep one, but the other two. What about like if you, oh no, bungee jump and then you just whack the floor? Fuck that. No, fuck that. Yeah, but you wouldn't know because oh. you hit, hit the floor so fast. <laughs> no, I, no I'd one. say I'd say fighting a bear, but I'd probably dodge it and win anyway. So let's not go there. Oh my god! You know how many messages I get from people? It's, they keep that. sending, they keep sending me bears. They're like, Ben's so stupid, he can't dodge a bear. <laughs> have you gentlemen, have you gentlemen seen that advert for Twix? The new advert for Twix. You know the no. chocolate bar. No, it's really cool. I, I, do you want me to? Just, can I just explain it really quickly? Yeah, go ahead. All it is is there's a there's a Twix and yeah. there's two brothers sitting there who look identical talking about it, and they're just like, how to, to explain and how it doesn't matter whether you have the left or right one. It's fantastic. You eat it. It's crunchy. Blah blah. But it, Behind them, there's two bears watching them two, and they're saying exactly the same words about <laughs> eating them. And it, and it to's and from, but it was, I, I have to say, it was an advert I watched earlier, and I thought that's one of the best adverts I've watched in a long, long time. Um, so if anyone gets a chance to see that Twix advert with the bears and the people, it is a great little advert. It made me tickle. It's this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> it's so stupid, but the concept's just brilliant. It is pretty cool. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Um, all right, so you guys don't have a Twix, two and three. Ben, you Twix didn't pick a boost in stock. Ben, you didn't even pick one. Uh, you're gonna say something mushy. I know exactly what you're gonna say. No, already. I'm not gonna think. I know exactly no, what I, you're gonna say already. What? I wasn't. I was gonna say something that would be like extreme, like fuck it, the made headlines. Something that was like oh. surfer. 
bodybuilder surf, tried surfing and got, got fucking nailed got by a great white. Eaten by a shark, yeah. Yeah? Well, that would terrify the fuck out of me, but at least it'd be a story. i get a story out of it. There so you, you so you want the you want the fame, the 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, he wants to take the fame after. Yeah, he wants the fame. I don't want to be around for the fame, but I'd like it to have some sort of like, holy fuck, that happened? Cool, move on. I don't want to be like, oh, he was in the corner and just like, yeah. Yeah. Like go out in a ball of flame, like Evil Knievel style. Isn't it funny how everybody thinks? I didn't even, first of all, I didn't think about fucking and dying. And I never thought of the fame aspect either. That's so crazy. Like like having something that's an impact. Yeah. Yeah. Something that's like, but okay, what what was the mushy thing you think I was going to go for? I thought you were going to say like, I don't know. I don't even want to say it now. Just leave it. Laying in, yeah, yeah. lay in a hammock with my family around me. And, uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I thought, okay, whatever. Who cares? Um, James, what's going on, brother? How are you? I'm good. I'm how's, good. Your, just, how's, your, uh, how's your week? Uh, decent so far. Can't complain. Um, is, is Janneke back from uh, Norway yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's back. She actually goes to Norway for her new job on the 11th. So... Uh, She'll be there almost permanently, but coming back in between um, for a year, just for one year. It's just cover of another friend of hers. Are you who's on maternity leave? Are you confident? Like, are you guys? That's tough, man. Are you guys secure enough in it's your relationship? But... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because we've done it before. Um, there was a time I can't remember when, but we did it before for a while. I had done it when I was in America for three for three months. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're good like that. That's the one thing actually I have to say about my relationship is that's the one thing I'm very secure about is that we can be uh, wherever, yeah. yeah, but we'll speak very often and communication is very good and trust is very high. It's a very good relationship, I have to say. For the things she does bother me with, that it's worth the trade off for the what, trust and and whatnot. What does she bother you with? Just the fucking Norwegianness sometimes, <laughs> honestly. Like just the blunt, the blunt forceful nature that comes with her <laughs> wrath. It's sometimes she's hard work, man. Like I can be at the dinner table with a few friends and Yannicka and I'm looking at my, my friends and they're looking at me and looking at Yannicka and like, you can tell that they're like, Oh shit, this is awkward because Yannicka's so <laughs> bolshy. You know what she's like? She's yeah. bolshy as fuck. And yeah. um, she can come across quite rude, even though she's not meaning to be. Yeah. Um, and that's always quite difficult. Cause I know that she doesn't mean to come across that way, but others don't. So then I'm kind of like middleman, like, no, she just says things because they don't have a fucking filter in Norway. They just say it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that doesn't bother me because I, I don't hate anyone for how they are, like, in that respect. But sometimes it can be a little bit like, oh, again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I got to I gotta say, though, when I think, like, even though uh, what you're saying sounds hard, it also sounds like it would have a lot of perks as well. It does because uh, it, it, nothing's to guess, you know, nothing's left wondering well it's just no i mean like um you know if she's gone for a year right let's say she comes back home what once every two weeks once a week yeah something like that would be once every probably two to three i reckon yeah so it's like so i think back to when me and summer met she lived in toronto which is only it's like a three-hour drive but we she would come and see me like on the weekend and then go home for the week and she would work there during the weekend she'd come back and forth right but it made me miss her so it was like it was good for our relationship. Almost, it's definitely, it's definitely good for a relationship. Definitely, I yeah. think um, suffocation can sometimes be a problem. Yeah, it's almost like you get a break, and then when you see the person, you appreciate them more. And 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 then you get like, and from us, even from a standpoint of like, you get horny because you can't fuck for a few days, and then that's you see I mean. him after a little build up. Well, hey, it's good. It's like new, it's like a new relationship again. That's what I mean. It's almost like there, when I say appreciation, I mean like in a bunch of different ways. You want to, yeah, you wanna, many many ways. You want to fuck voice. You, you want to fuck more. You want to talk more. You want to like do stuff together. It's like you want to make the most of that that time that you do have because you understand how precious time is. Yeah, you, I told you. Know, is, is that feeling reciprocated by the by the woman though? Because I feel like that's always the man's mindset. It's like, oh, a bit of space is lovely. Like a little bit of separation, whereas the wife is like, fuck you. You're not getting any separation. Yeah. yeah. I told oh, Summer. Yeah. I told Summer to move out again. I'm like, you should move out again for a bit, and we should just see each other on the weekend. She's like, "Fuck you, you asshole." It's, it's like it's like that's like a lad's perfect setup, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, just, I just want to train and shit during the week and do the things yeah. I enjoy. Go and yeah. get coffees yeah. with the boys, and then at the weekends, <clears throat> chill. Like, like yeah. working away, like Monday to Friday would be like just go. <laughs> yeah, weekends. So yeah, no, not a lot really going on this week. Just I've just been training with a friend of mine, uh, Ben 
knows who he is. Nath, oh, I've kid. been seeing a photo. The guy looks got a crazy the guy. Back. The guy that showed you up from the back, yeah. Yeah, he smoked me. Smoked me. I was like, what yeah, a- cheers, bruv. <laughs> It's like, That's do a fucking. Back. He's he's lat he's lats and lower lats. Okay. Very wide, very wide, and he insert low. You're Good talk, kid. Talking about uh, yeah, heck this, rules. This gentleman here, where the fuck is it? Uh, where, no, it's where? probably further up. Surely it's higher oh. up because this is old stuff. Yeah, this is way back. What is, am I on the no, wrong? No, wrong oh, oh, you're on my you're on my like. Stick on the main account. It's got it in his bio. Oh. Yeah, that's the one. Sorry, we just confused. This is the real page. What is I saw this? Is that you? Yeah, that was uh 2019. It's a good oh, look, dude, That's a really good look. That was with Phil Viz, actually. Well, maybe you should go back. Maybe I should go back, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> uh, yeah, that no, this is Nate Fear. Yeah, he's got a great back. Yeah, yeah, he's put on a lot of muscle over the years. I have to say, um, yeah. lots of muscle. Ben vouched for that as well like he used to be very slim no he didn't look like that yeah he did not look like that when i was back in england he, he's now at a point when he does a show he's definitely like a, a guy that normally wins his class and gets put into the overall put it that way yeah um the same guy know. right he, same guy yeah. yeah 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 and uh it's more impressive he, in the flesh for sure he's definitely no, I, better i mean not not that his front is bad but his back is his back so yeah his back's yeah. always like when i see him at a show i'm like your back definitely carries you like it's a good like he he gets really good like condition on his glutes and stuff from the back. It just looks good. The amount of detail, um, yeah, he's just good. Good bodybuilder. Yeah, the whip. Yeah. The whip he reminds Strong me. As well. He reminds me of a conversation we were having on the other podcast about uh, if you could have any one of Ronnie Coleman's body parts, which one would it be? Most people sit back, don't they? No, I said arms. And Ian said, "Oh like, yeah, no, I would as well. I, I would say like arms at their prime for sure." But the reason he made me think of that is. He's got a really thick, he's got a really big torso and smaller limbs. And we were saying that if you had a preference, it would be the other way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd rather, like, personally, I would rather have a smaller torso and bigger limbs. Like Ronnie had in his prime. Uh, yeah. Because Ronnie had small, he used to have, like, really long arms and legs in the beginning. Yeah. Torso was very small and bunched up. Yeah. And then yeah. It, it got really thick and then it kind of, yeah. Yeah, I just always... uh it's hard though. I feel like is that predetermined? Do you think? Not yeah, pre- definitely. I, I don't want to say predetermined. I don't know if that's it, the right no, but it, it's your, it's your, it's you, it's your, your genetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're either long torsoed or not. Like you can't. Your torso doesn't suddenly change length. Your broadness of your shoulders doesn't suddenly change. You can only work within those. But the know. best, the best bodybuilders usually have both, right? It's not like when we look at kind Mr. of when we look at. Mr. Of, if you look at Dorian, Dorian was more of a torso dominant bodybuilder. I would say. I would say. De- oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Even with like Ronnie, though, Ronnie didn't have naturally wide shoulders. He he wasn't like widest guy. But if you looked so, at Ronnie when I, when you take people at their peak, yeah. When you take Ronnie at his peak, he had both. If you take Phil at his peak, oh yeah, he he, he definitely both. put on enough muscle to yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Now like, that's another thing, isn't it? There's your genetic structure, but then there's your genetic capacity to build muscle to make that structure look more even. That's more what I meant. You you were yeah. talking structure, James. I was talking yeah, yeah. more uh, muscularity and proportions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like Phil, even though Phil had like a little bit narrower clavicles, he was able uh, to build enough thickness uh, front to yeah, back. In, in his prime to actually, yeah. F- yeah. yeah. But And that, that's something that's very hard to predict, like someone's capacity to, like, you can see someone, if they're natural, you can see where their frame is and where their structure is, where their muscle belly is up, but trying to predict how they actually respond and, and put on tissue and change that shape and yeah. silhouette that's you can't predict that that takes five to ten years to find out how you're going to look yeah. uh, an example i looking at nath a few years ago i wouldn't have thought he would look like this kind of structurally i didn't think he'd ever have a yeah. back yeah i didn't know the lats were going to spill over like they do like it didn't look yeah. like they were going to so you, you can't tell yeah yeah you look, yeah, at, nick, you look at nick walker in, in when he was um a, a young young bodybuilder you wouldn't have been able to predict that muscularity coming through in certain areas at all. I wouldn't have thought his arms would be able to do what they've done. Nick is pretty even like everywhere, except his arms are far bigger than everything else. crazy. I wouldn't yeah. have predicted his arms could have done that. Like if you look at his chest, back, it's all shoulder, shoulders, yeah. legs, everything looks yeah. pretty that even. Level, that arm is just... It's, it's the four, this forearm sits on the peak and doesn't even get yeah. to go down. Do you remember, yeah, do you remember when crazy. we were out in New York and we all did that training thing together right mm-hmm. he did biceps and i was watching him. he's like full tilt off season this okay. last 
last year, I think, right? Yeah. I, it was almost like he couldn't, the, the range of motion almost, yeah. he was full, but it was like tough that he couldn't, yeah. there was his maximum because this touched that. I was like, that's That, that was probably like Holman's hamstrings or quad, like in his time, you know, like he probably couldn't like curl all the way up. You're just muscle bound. I just isn't, that a bad, isn't a bad place to be. <laughs> Somebody was catching at... him up. Go ahead, sorry. Ben. Sorry. No, go ahead. I guess. You cut out. Hartman, you see that? Oh, I said no. Justin right. Shire. Justin Shire is catching him up with those arms. Oh, yeah. Justin's got crazy arms. Yeah. yeah. yeah Justin's crazy. Got a, mad. You know, the craziest thing about Justin's arms is he's got a really, really, he's got the same thing Luke had. Almost. Long bicep, but he's, he's got still that, full. No, the, the tricep sweep underneath. Yeah, where you do front double yeah. and it comes yeah. and it hangs. Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh shit, the, smashings. He's got that thickness there. That's the, you can't buy that shit. There's only a few people have had that. Like Compton had that, Luke had that, fucking and Justin, obviously this Justin. But it's funny if we talk about the elite bodybuilders, like if you look at Derek, if you look at Hottie, if you look at Samson, if you look at yeah. Andrew, yeah, uh Hunter. Hunter could use more torso, but if you look at the other four, mm. they're pretty balanced torso to limb. And that's what makes it's proportions, isn't it? That's what makes yeah. you a good bodybuilder. Yeah, when you have, when you have that ratio, you don't have disproportion between the two. And this yeah. is again, this is why Nick supposedly lost at Arnold, just because yeah. of the the uh, the imbalance of of lower to upper versus Samson's all the over overall balance. Of, yeah. yeah, and like you get you get it, you get it. Like it, it's understandable. If that's the criteria, that's the criteria. It's hard because yeah. it's like fuck shit. I hope my body can um, do that. You know, because no one can. Oh, yeah. yeah. What I remember, James. I remember after your. Olympia debut, you were having those thoughts because of the the width you're in. You were like, "Well, some of that is out of my control. I can control yeah. what I can and put on yeah. the tissue I can. But what limitations do I have yeah. that are going to stop? And no matter what I manage to do, what's yeah. the limitation there?" And yeah, that's... You, you know what I find interesting about that though is you look back in history and you see guys that had those limitations and ignored them and still did well. Like immediately, yeah. like when I think I know I say this all the time. Some people agree, some people don't, but. But James reminds me of a Branch Warren 2.0. They don't have the same physique, but it's it's no, a similar like, similar yeah, structure. Yeah, yeah similar. There's, structure. A, there's a big gray, gray area between the two where you can cross them over for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, but then you still, if you look at Branch, you're still like, okay, he was able to win in other ways. Like he developed yeah. enough, he developed enough thickness, enough graininess, yeah, and enough consistency where they couldn't ignore him anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I still believe, <laughs> I still believe that's possible, but you have to. You're going to have to come in good a lot. That's a, Actually, that's another point I, I think a lot of people don't talk about that I don't know is necessarily fair, but it's still human nature. Sometimes I think guys get rewarded for just being perfect all the fucking time. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying Branch didn't deserve his placings, but maybe your eye gets drawn to him more because yeah, there's like a reward like, almost for consistency in a yeah, sense. Yeah, you're like this guy's fucking peeled I, every I would fucking say that, time. I would say that with Dexter because I I feel like a lot of Dexter shows. Yeah, he was like don't know Dexter's one of the best to ever do it, but like there's other physiques I thought up there that I could have given the show uh, sometimes. Yeah, but Dexter was just always only like floating around that one percent of being off at top, you know, maximum at his best. Like he was always ninety nine percent on. Like well, there was only a couple of years where he weren't, and it showed when he weren't, they started yeah. not rewarding him. As soon as he brought it back, started rewarding him again. So yeah, it's like I feel like I consistency know. is an important factor as well. I don't know if you remember this, James. I know you're like a bodybuilding bodybuilding historian, but like when I started bodybuilding, it was like almost the time when Dexter just started getting noticed. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was around that ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one. Yeah, he he started getting noticed there. Shit. Right. Yeah. And he, I think when I started, it was 2001 and he was second in Toronto. Yeah. But I remember on the back then, it wasn't no, there wasn't Instagram and all that. It was just message boards. Yeah. And I remember through the, through those like three or four years from 2000 to 2004, there was a lot of commentary from fans about Dexter. Yeah. How come, how come Dexter's not being rewarded? Dexter's the blade. Dexter's always in shape, blah, blah. And this theme became like really loud. Almost that carries the, weight. That carries weight. Yeah, almost to the point where I don't think he could be ignored anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because he just came in better and better and better and sharper and sharper every show and never ever showed any but any. That, but that, that's that's what we have to understand with bodybuilding versus sports. You know these other sports. These other sports, the way that you win, it has to be very very obvious and it's, it, there's like a particular rule in place. Mm. With bodybuilding, there is influence. Yeah. And that's part that's part of the game as well. You want your audience to get behind you. 
people yeah. like Nick, you know, Nick in his first year as a pro got what was it like fifth of that first show? Yeah, at the new at the they created a Chicago. Created inc- the following Chicago. went crazy for him. Yeah, he was and I'm not saying that, yeah, and I'm not saying that's why he won, but I am saying it's a it's a contributing factor to why you get a look in. Well, it's momentum, right? Yeah, momentum, momentum is so important in bodybuilding. If people like you, if you're like a champion in the people's eyes, the judges will give you an opportunity as long as you're not out of shape. And I think that's the key word is it's an opportunity. It's, it's not opportunity. like you can still, it's not promised. Yeah. Well, it's a... well Hardy's got to be that example, right? Yeah. Cause in the last four or five years, Hardy is just. Every yeah. time it's been. And the fans are. And the, yeah. And the fans are always like Hardy, Hardy, Hardy. So yeah, it has some sway somehow, but I mean, look, I think also, I think also because sorry for what it's, no, no, it's also, also like, because ultimately I know there's a judging criteria, but. It's the masses, it's the entire following of bodybuilding that kind of determines the direction Yes. in time. Because yeah. even if the judges have a preference, if in two, if two years consistently or three years consistently, the audience doesn't see it that way, I'm, I hate to say it, but the judges will eventually have to sway to well, the audience because it's just the way it is. Because James, they control, you know? James, my era is a perfect example of that. Mm. My era from 2000, 2010, you, you wouldn't believe the bubble gut theme was yeah. the main the main fucking theme of that era that's yeah. where the, the term came from that era we're like oh yeah, yeah. all these guys they're bubble guts and they're fucking they're gross and this and that yep and it took them a long time but eventually the judges it, were like oh. okay, when, we yeah. when arnold finally spoke up then people he was like okay they're like okay everybody has now said this is not the way well, that's why i suppose the listeners even guys that are listening to this podcast today like in a sense in the long run all of us are the ones that kind of have a power of the direction of bodybuilding, in a sense. In a way, in a way yeah. yeah. Yeah, not saying way, we yeah. can completely change, but if we yeah. if we genuinely believe something to be what Mr. Olympia is, it's only our voices over a period of long, long time that will make that so, in a sense. Um, I had a conversation with somebody who is a very influential person in bodybuilding mm. uh, at the Arnold, and he was saying, you know, the two-day show thing is very tough for judges because people think that, judges are immune to social media and they don't pay mm. attention to social media. And uh, this person was telling me, look, judges are fucking human. Yeah, man. And when they go back to their rooms and they see thousands oh, of, be, yeah. yeah, thousands of people are saying this or that. It, I don't think it makes, he was saying, he's like, look, I don't think it makes their decision for them, but it definitely, it it's, it's definitely an influence yeah. when they go back the next day. Yeah, definitely. So, and I agree with that. And somebody else I spoke to didn't agree with that. Like, no, no, the judges are not, they're not paying attention to that shit. Doesn't matter. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm like, it's everywhere. People, people are still people. They're still reading shit. Yeah. 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 Listen, even if they're not reading shit, they're still talking, they're still having conversations around the, even with their friends. Might not be social media, but their friends be like, oh, I had him. Now it starts coming in. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I saw it. Maybe I see this. Maybe I see that. Yeah, I mean, look. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a, it is a muscle pageant, and it is subjective. There is criteria, so I guess you could call it a sport. But at the end of the day, it's subjective, and the people, yeah. the people have influence over how the judges think to a certain degree. Yeah, right? and 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 there is, like you said, a certain. Even though it is there is criteria, there's a certain amount of space within that because, like you say, if one attribute is very strong. Then it could sway in a favor. Like someone could have the symmetry and the balance, but at that particular show, if someone's nails, it might just give them enough points on those cards, you know, yeah. to be like, okay, well, we're going to swing in favor of you today. Yeah. You know, so you, as a bodybuilder, you really just got to try and bring every fucking thing you can. You yeah. got to come with a full arsenal and and work as hard as you fucking can to bring every attribute as best it can. You can win a show by, like I say this with Samson at this Arnold. I think Samson was like a consistent, like 8.5, 9 in, across the board. Yeah. And and that's he played the game well. Yep. Other people like Nick, they went for the ten out of ten condition. Yep. But then what it does to proportion it knocks it down to a seven. You yep. lose three points. Samson's only lost one and a half points in those two attributes yep. because he's come in with that. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a fucking RPG but in the, a game. But the tricky, you know, the tri- even trickier thing about what you're saying, James, is certain people can get away with other things that other people can't. For sure. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody, if somebody came in with the level of conditioning Samson had, but didn't have his proportions. They'd be fucked. They'd be fucked. Yes, but because, yes. but because Samson's, 
so strong in those other attributes. Yeah, he looks like a modern day Flex Wheeler, so he can get away with like not being one hundred percent peeled. And then it's the opposite with Nick. Nick, Nick, like if 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 Nick throws away any structure for condition, like I know yeah. he has to come in hard, but if he throws away any structural performance for condition, it puts him in second. That's right. You have to play, now, he's, you yeah, play. you have to play. To, you play to your own. But then shit, that's right? what, and that's when you then get Phil Heath and Molly Coleman because then they figure yeah. out they they, they take the Samson. You yeah. take Samson, and then you figure out the condition, and then yeah, it's yeah. The game over. Or you Sa- Sa- Nick, Samson gets Phil Heath condition, then that is Mister Olympia. It's over for everybody at that yeah, point. It's yeah. Mister Olympia. Yeah, I would if I was competing against Samson. He looked like that. I'd put something in his drink so he falls asleep <laughs> and misses the show. <laughs> Just letting you know, Samson. So if I ever offer you a drink before a show. Don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it because I'm definitely making you go to sleep. <laughs> but the night, you know, the nice thing is that I think um, Nick and his team have that figured out, right? Oh, like, sure. They, they, they know, know. They know. Oh, shit. It's about they, consistency. Like they know, but, but what I'm saying is they know that they have to play their game. Yeah. So I expect Nick to be big as a fucking house at the Olympia, but well, still, but still hard. I think now they know that more than that's, ever, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. You mean, it took, okay, it took the right, show right. to figure it out. They wanted to try to see, because he could have been rewarded for what he did at the show, and if he did, then it would have given them even more direction that way. So mm-hmm. they haven't lost, although he didn't win the show, you haven't lost anything in the grand scheme, because the Olympia is the goal. He now knows what he has to do for the Olympia, which he might not really, imagine if he went to the Olympia doing what he did for the Arnold, because he hadn't tried it at the Arnold, yeah. then come like fifth. I was just thinking this, there are certain points in time where and you'll get great athletes or champions that will have those kind of they'll think they're negatives but if they're able to take them um and learn from them and and grow from them it can make or break them it can what well, it can make them yeah. well, i think nick's nick's from what i see in nick's nick, posts and speaking to him yeah he's definitely like this is a good yeah. thing for him he's taking it as a okay you've now shown me what i need to be mm-hmm. let's bring it so it's going to be really good because samson's now like the guy to watch Nick's figuring his shit out. That's a really good running story into that Olympia, in my opinion, more so exciting than Derek and Huddy, because I don't know. I think people relate to Nick and um, people like Samson a bit more because they, they tend to put themselves out there a bit more. Yeah. But therefore Derek, I think, Derek, I think that's, Derek's been doing it. Derek's been doing a Derek's good doing job. A good job. Yeah, Derek's yeah. doing a good job. And I get yeah. it with Huddy because Huddy's, I think Huddy's, I think with Huddy, he's just blood in, blood out bodybuilder. Okay. Like that guy is in his blood. He just wants yeah. to win and be the best. Yeah. And I totally respect that. It's kind of like a Dorian of our time. Yeah. So he doesn't want all the shit in his face. But I don't I, I also don't know like we don't know what his social uh, outings and stuff are like in Iran. Yeah, like, no, there may, could be like, a lot may, going on. There might be loads of shit going on. Yeah, we just don't see him over here because he doesn't speak English, he doesn't do this yeah. and that. So yeah. maybe he is doing a lot uh over social there. over there, right? But we're not maybe. we maybe. just don't see it. I hear that. Um but I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting and I I don't know who I always also I'm always thinking like who's gonna surprise us this year. Yeah. Because right. there's gonna be a few people that qualify, like you gotta think also like Brett qualified in, you know, the fucking that's a new face. When you get a new face going into the Olympia who hasn't done it before, you can't really place them because you don't know. Yeah. So I'm I mean, interested to see if Baruz makes it, if Baruz wins the show and does make it this year, what can he do? Baruz looks crazy. Like I, I love I love Baruz's physique. I, I do. I like, like he's like aesthetic he's not like as dense as like say a brett but yeah. his shape is just like oh it's flawless if you could like program genetic structure into a, a machine and say i want the best structure for bodybuilding yeah. what would come out the other side would be Baruzi's structure Bruce. and, and muscular <laughs> yeah it's just crazy man the no, double. Oh. i think i think what i think when i think of the olympia i think of somebody who's there but not all the way there right so it's yeah. like i think of uh, like Crizo could make a big like splash, right? I think Crizo is an incredible bodybuilder. Uh, Hunter with a newfound like focus could make a huge impact. Like you, uh, but you're taking this year off. Like I just think there are guys that are on that like cusp. Yeah, just need to nail that, that shit. That one thing could kind of put them over. Yeah, Chris, Crizo, like you saying, I, I really think Crizo is potentially able to move up a few places for sure. You if know, he works on his, I'd say this. And this is just my honest thing. If Crizo can just get his like thickness in his hands and glutes up a bit, just around that area, bam, yeah, dangerous as fuck. There's, no, there's like... no reason Crizo should be outside the top ten, really. No, no. Wait, a, wait, a, wait a minute. I think it's more than that because only the only reason I say that is I feel like he's such a big guy. I feel like he needs more front to back thickness, like that. His back. Yeah, but needs... a lot, I feel like a lot of that comes from like having no ass. Think so? You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think a lot of it comes from just the weight in the lower body of the arse. And but hamstring. is it coming from having like a thin back too, though? I think his back's good enough. If if I had a priority, if I was like, you need to prioritize something. If nothing could get better apart from one thing next year, I wouldn't say it's his back. I would still say it's say probably the glute, low, glutes low, and poster, posterior lower body. Okay, I can see if, that. If, yeah, because how much can you bring up everything? If you can bring up everything, fucking hell, do it. There's um, one guy we don't talk about enough that I'm really, really excited about. And uh, it's this gentleman here. Oh, this, yeah, V Oak. Yeah, yeah, he looks crazy. It's just a fucking house, man. Not house controls. I don't know what he's going to look like next to other guys, but... I, I think he will look very good. Let's just be honest here. He's young, right? He is young. In his 20s. Yeah. Like, he's maintained a good waist with just massive legs, great body he, parts everywhere. He's a freak. I don't know if... like Look at, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's nuts. That's nuts. <laughs> if I look like if I look like that in a front double, man, fucking hell. Jesus Christ. I'll do a show tomorrow. I wonder, I can't. That's like, crazy. It, it lats look good from the front, but I, I don't remember if they were good from the back. Anybody remember his back shot? Look at this. Look at the proportions on this fucking kid. I would say if he did any yeah. show that's like low tier, middle tier, he's winning. Yeah. I, shows, I, I, think, I think the only shows he'd have maybe a trouble at is like a New York or an Arnold or an, and then the Olympia. Let's see what his back here is. He doesn't look as big standing next to other guys, though. I don't know. He's, he's still he's quite short. He's quite short, though, right? He's, he's still pretty not... stacked compared to them boys. <laughs> uh, he well, I don't. He's not like killing this guy right here. His legs are quite a bit bigger, but his not... quads are pretty. <laughs> but he's not destroying them like badly. I want to see him next to Nick eventually. You, I think you're gonna see that. He is fucking really good. That side leg is fucking crazy. Let's see what the back looks like. Lats look good there. Yeah. Look at the hamstrings and glutes. Fuck. He, he, his back's not in a bad position for where that was in time. He's been more thick he, or something. Like that. Yeah, if he can get that back thicker, wow. Look at Plus the he's fucking fucking body. Though. Look at the lower body from behind. <laughs> he's got his legs separated so far apart. They're still thick as fuck. Yeah, imagine being able to stand that wide on stage and still have thick yeah. legs. He's got a good back. Well, you're, I, you're, you're right. I, I could, be, see, could be thicker. I want to see him in like three, four years time next to Nick. That'll be interesting. I want to see. Look at that. I want to see him now. I want to see what he looks like now standing next to like. Uh, I think he'd give a lot of people trouble. I think there's probably only maybe a handful or two, two handfuls of bodybuilders right now that beat him in a show. If and you got to remember, this is three months ago too. I mean, who knows where the fuck he is by the time yeah. he steps on stage. Yeah. I'm very impressed by him. And he does a lot of social media. He does some, you know, this is this is actually pretty funny. Him and his girlfriend are fucking around. <laughs> He's thick as well. Like it's just the depth in him. Oh. I know he's looking large at the minute. Another gentleman from Europe is uh Tim Buddhasheim's looking big at the minute. Oh, I like Tim. He's a nice guy. I think he's great. Yeah. He's got a lot of density. Tim's always had a really good physique. It just I think it's more of a conditioning thing with him than anything. Yeah, he's just got to get that peak. He works with Stefan. I think he'll get it. I think he'll nail it. But he's a good bodybuilder, man. He's doing the rounds in America at a minute, I think. Like just yeah. he's very complete. On some... he's yeah. Very complete. Yeah. Yeah, he's not really missing anything. I think it's just always been a conditioning thing with him. He reminds me of like a uh, uh, open John Jewett, maybe to a degree, you know, a little bit. <laughs> You're just saying that because they look the same. <laughs> no, no, like I mean like shape shape of the arms. Bullshit. If you cut his head off, you'd be like, it looks like John Jewett with hair. But even the body, you look structurally shaped, apart from abs. I feel like they got a similar structure. Maybe, maybe, but I think it's like think, they look facially the same. I think you're racist. I think that's. Just... I'm just <laughs> putting two white people under the same, painting them with the same brush. Uh, but look, a... look at that physique, though. It's fucking good. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's. Uh, he has won. He won the California, didn't he? I'm not sure. He goes, no, he got second. I think he got second to Patrick Moore that year. Actually, you know, he got second. Fuck. So he hasn't won a pro show yet, but he's definitely going to. I was going to say, I don't remember any shows he's won, but he's always yeah. in the top three or top five. Yeah. Good bodybuilder. Very good bodybuilder. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do some questions. We got a fresh, we got a fresh batch. Nice. Ben, anything new with you before we go on? Ben's, so. Ben's been fired. Ben got fired as a, a, <laughs> a hostile athlete. He's been fired. But he's been upgraded in some he's other aspects. Re, he's been rehired as management. <laughs> there you go. I got, I got, a, I got a pity rehire. 
You got we're like, we don't know where to put this guy. Just give him a management position. <laughs> no. I think that's no. more suitable. No, we gave him a we promoted him. We promoted him. I think that's great news. Ben, I'm gonna send yeah. you a cake. I think it's great news too, isn't it? Because you know what? It, it just shows that you get, like if someone's with the company and they put the work in, they work hard. There is potential for, you know, things to for growth for all the people involved. I mean, look, I think that that's definitely it's part important. of it, and for sure, I, I appreciate you saying that, James. I wasn't thinking of that, but um, that's for sure part of it. But I think uh, the way I was thinking of it is it's nice. Is the company's been around for three years now, and we were able to like elevate, oh, yeah, everybody. So awesome. that makes me, that part makes me feel good. Cause you know, when you start this kind of thing, you don't, dude, there's so many supplement companies. It's hard, bro. I can imagine I, it's so I, fucking hard. There's a couple supplement pages I follow. One is like uh stacked. It's like stack 3d. It's called. It's like, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. And every day they post like new supplement Reviews. stuff. Yeah. So many. And I'm like, I haven't oh, heard of like three quarters of the companies they post. I'm like, I've never heard of this company. I had no idea how many supplement companies there were. So, like when we started, I'm like, we're just gonna do our best to see what happens. So you just got to stay. You just well, no one's got to tell you what to do because you do what you do anyway, and what you do is what you got to do. Just you know be what? if you just be hostile, everyone else will fuck around. You just do your thing. You know, it's interesting, James. It's a lot like bodybuilding. The whole thing is it's, a lot like bodybuilding. Yeah, the minute you start to try to change your training, change your fucking diet, you don't get anywhere. Well, it... All fundamentals repeat. You know? It's repeat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It feels a lot like bodybuilding. You make like incremental gains and it's a long game. Yeah. Every once in a while, you'll see, you'll see like a phenomenal bodybuilder come along, like a Phil Heath, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with companies. Every once in a while, you'll see a supplement company come along. Maybe they have a ton of money when they started and they'll fucking blow up like right away. Yeah, like a fucking but I think, back in the day or some shit. Yeah, but I think a lot of these, a lot of it is just like, you know, when you talk to like Andy Frazilla about like first form, or if you yeah. listen to his podcast and stuff, he's like, it took him 20 years. Yeah. People so don't see that, do they? It's a lot like bodybuilding that way where like, you know, you, you're. But I do say this. I think what you've done, because you, you you and Jordan both have a similar approach into how you've approached things. You've both built an audience and a community prior to releasing product. And I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's such a sensible way to go about it because there's a genuineness to that and there's an authenticity that it shows that you didn't just whack out a supplement company trying to make money immediately. Yeah. You created a core, a, a base of people that you like to commune with yeah. and everything grew from that. And I think you and you and Jordan are probably the only two companies that are really the purest in, in their vision. Um, so anyone that's listening to this, like if you, you know, watched Fuad back in the day and you saw when you first heard him do real body boom podcasts and stuff, that kind of relationship he's created with you uh, that bleeds into the company. Like yeah. there's genuineness there. That yeah. doesn't come often. That doesn't come often. Usually it's like you said, some dude comes along with a load of money, takes on some athlete. Everyone finds really popular and just wax it out and puts some colorful writing on it. But there's yeah. difference to this. It's a, it's a, it's like I say, it's actually, it's like gasp. It's like Jordan. Yeah. It's like hostile. Like you guys have a, there's more to it. There's a lot yeah. more depth to it than just fucking superficial surface, make money shit. Obviously money's nice, but there's a bigger message to it as well. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no, money, listen, money is part of it. I'm not going to lie to anybody. It's a business, sure. but nice but, there, but there are many ways to like express yourself through business. Some people don't care about anything except the dollar coming back. Yeah. And some people will not, uh, they won't give up their morals or their values for that dollar coming back. So it depends yeah. what kind of person you are, right? Like some companies... Yeah don't give a shit what they have to do to get that dollar back and other companies do. So it just kind of depends how you want to make that money. Yeah. But I think there's a, and it's really broad. There's like an emotional relationship between a hostile brand and the hostile customers. Yeah. Well, more, it's because we're, so than... but think about what you said about, uh, Samson and Nick and Derek earlier about being out in front and being around people and talking to people they're developing a relationship with their audience. It's kind of like, you know, I don't, that's not why we do this, but I'm on here fucking four to six hours a week. So people develop their relationship with the brand because absolutely, that's what we're doing all day long. So absolutely. Anyway, anyway I just wanted to uh, give Ben his props for well, moving up. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right. right. Let's go on to some questions. Uh, okay. Uh, when when are we seeing another twenty thousand calorie cheat day? Actually, James, you were supposed to eat. You were supposed to eat one hundred and fifty nuggets. I know. I still need to do it. I'm still game. When are you going to do it? Well, we need to be together, so it's got to be. No, you, time. Can, you can do it on Zoom, FaceTime. We we'll do it live yeah, on the podcast. It, rec- yeah, I got, a, I, got a, I got an idea, James. We'll do a podcast, but yeah. I need to be like watching a movie while I'm eating because I eat better when I'm watching a movie. That's like cheat tactics. I don't like that. No, 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 no. So I'm saying, like, uh, bro. well, that's because well, you don't want to know you're eating. Yeah. So we'll pick a movie that we both like. Okay. And we'll watch it. On Zoom together while we're eating. Do a watch party. We'll do a watch party. <laughs> that's like, give some more, there's a little bit more to it now. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? Come? Can I yeah, come? I don't want to be left out. Of course. We'll just, we'll have everybody. We'll just watch. Okay, I, need, I need a heads up because McDonald's is about an hour away. So I've got to go yeah. get him. We'll get like four or five, six of us and we'll watch a movie and we'll just pick out. So we've got to get Three the McDonald's mi- takeaway, take it home. Yeah. Yeah, heat it up cold. in the microwave. No, you're not, microwave. Gonna, you're not. You're gonna eat 150 nuggets in the fucking restaurant. Well, that's what I was planning on doing. No, no, I want to be laying down so that when I'm finished, yeah. I want to be sick. I'm in my own fucking bed. Going, no, but you gotta think like if you do it in the restaurant, they might get behind you and then be like, "Let's promote him." Yeah, but then you gotta walk home or Let's drive promote home. this guy. James is trying to get a sponsorship out of the deal. <laughs> Don't get Matt Bell's sponsorship. <laughs> I need to be. I need to be on a couch where I can like half lay down because then I'm comfortable and I can just yeah, keep... stomach's just got to be at like a 45 degree angle. Well, yeah. tell, J- tell James, since Yannicka's buggering off, tell James he's got to come to Canada after New York Pro and we'll. Oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> Samson, and, Samson and Ben are coming here after New York. You should come down. How long are you there again? Because you did say all, this before. They're only here for three days. Four days. That's a long way to go though for that many days, bro. So come to New York first. Yeah. Come to New York first. We'll go to the New York Pro, and then we'll come to Canada. You can train at Bev's gym, see Big Steve. Yeah. I'll think about it. You're not going to come, you fucker. No, uh, listen, don't count, don't count me out. No, is, is he one of those? He's a, he's I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those. Yeah. No, I'm not. He's I'm not. totally one of those. He's never no, going to come. Know, do you know the only reason I hate traveling, and I'll say it like straight up, is because I have to sort all my shit out that I take. I'll bring it for you. I'll bring it for you. We don't. We're not saying what we're doing, but you know what I mean. It's like fucking hell. Like <laughs> that's why I hate going places. That's the biggest that's issue that, I have. That's not that much of a hassle, given people. First of all, should... first of all, it's only it's only a week, and you're in the off season, so it might give you a little break. <laughs> a minute <minosauce> break, <laughs> one week, <laughs> one week off. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you, Milos. Two week break. Um, <laughs> I, I will. I know. We'll talk maybe later then, and we'll see some dates, and I'll see what's possible. All right, favorite favorite muscle to have pumped. Don't say penis. That's not a muscle, though, is it? I'm just saying. I expected one like of you to blood, say penis. It's a blood sack. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say chest. Quads. I love a good chest pump. What quad pump? What do I like more? Yeah, chest chest or arms. I, I never would, get an arm pump. I I was bicep my... or tricep? Tricep. Both. Both. I look tricep my best for arms. I look my best with a chest pump. Everything fills out. I feel like I look my best with a tri- like a tricep pump. You look so chilly when you got a chest pump though, for because you got so much. You got massive pecs, so it drains all the blood into you. Well, I just keep my pants on, and then everything up top looks great. <laughs> tactical, <laughs> tactical. Uh, favorite childhood memory for each person. Hmm. Favorite childhood memory. That's a really tough one because listen. We are, we've been around a long time. There's a lot of memories in these memory banks right now, boys. Yeah, but trying to, one, trying to pinpoint one is actually hard. That's, yeah, it's like trying, look, you've got like thousands of memories and you're trying to like pluck one from them. Okay, I don't think I'm going to pick a favorite because it's hard to pick a favorite, but I'll pick one. That was good. One good one was watching uh, Saturday night's main event wrestling with my father. That must be when cool. I When I was really young because he would let me stay up because they didn't start. I don't think that started till like later on at night. Yeah, and I used to have to go to bed at like nine thirty every night. But on the weekend, he'd be like, "You can stay up and watch wrestling with me." So he'd like stay up. Yeah, so that's probably one of my more memorable moments from being a child. What are we? What's the age cap? 
under 12 child. under under 12 i would say yeah, oh, yeah. fuck i was gonna go to 16 shit I don't know. that's what not happened? child you're a man you're spunking in women by then <laughs> I was I, no, I was a leap. I was a leap bloomer. <laughs> you, just um, you just shit. You definitely weren't. You're a man. <laughs> oh, I was like 18, I think, when I lost mine. Ben waited, waited longer, but then he made up for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why, why? Why are you putting that? Now? That's oh, okay. sorry. Like slander. <laughs> slander. I, I got I got kids that can watch YouTube. Ain't from I, I, what what, what, what are my <laughs> one of my nicest memories was being on holiday with my mum, my uncle, my auntie. I'm just hanging out by the swimming pool. My uncle doing backflips into the pool. That's cool. Just used to see him do backflips, and I was so impressed. I thought this man's. Cause... Did you guys? Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I, I... again, because I didn't have like a, a father figure at the time. I was super impressed and latched on to my uncle because he was like a man. I was like, this guy is so cool. He can backflip into a pool. And I just remember that bringing a lot of like joy. That's good. Did you guys do a lot of? I know Ben, you were a little bit more well off, but do you guys do a lot of vacations when you're younger? Oh. I did quite a few. I did quite a few to like places in Europe, like uh, Mallorca, like the Grand Canary, like Canary Islands and stuff, because they were cheap. Because you'd get the fucking Sun newspaper, and uh, <laughs> you remember them, Ben? You get like the Sun newspaper, you save like five tokens from the newspaper, and then your mum could get a holiday for like two hundred quid. So that's what we, we used to do. We didn't have a lot of money, so I remember one of the memories was going to Niagara Falls because Niagara Falls was like a three-hour drive. Oh, nice. So we packed the fam. My dad packed the family in a car, and we went to Niagara Falls as a family. I was really young at the time, but I remember, I remember doing that and like going to the beach because there was a beach like, I don't know, half an hour from our house. And at that time, they had. I don't know if you guys have this where you're from, but at the beach, they have like the barbecues that are built into the ground there. Yeah, and you can just like use you, the communal you, ones. Yeah, you can just use the communal ones. So we would go, and my mom would bring all the food. And my dad would barbecue there, and that was like our vacation because we didn't have any money, so we would go That's to the so beach. Cool. We'd go that, to the beach, and doesn't that say a lot though? No, what's it say? <laughs> it just says that that like, how much do you really need to have the best moments in your life? Oh, is, dude. It, is it what is it oh, what yeah. you have, or is it who you have them with? I've said yeah. this before. Even because because like, listen, when we were all together um, at Ben's parent-in-law, just sitting around having a cigar and a fucking yeah. um, mm -hmm. whiskey. That's one of the best times I've ever had. Yeah. In my yeah. in my honest, that's one. What did it take? It took a few people to sit around the table and, and, and just talk. Yeah. Yeah, no, I. it's funny. When I look back at my childhood, we didn't have money for shit, but somehow my parents always kept us together, kept us happy, and, like, we had love, good bro. good memories without doing anything special. But, uh, without doing anything, my, but, but, but wait, wait, wait. It's like without doing anything special, but the context of what is special. But the know, special... Like, but you well, didn't I mean, have to do because special was just what you had in it. Like I mean, say. I mean, materially, like you yeah, you didn't look, have to do anything. Like you would talk to your friends, and your friends were like, "Yeah, my parents took me to Florida, blah blah blah," and I'm like, "I'm going to the beach." You know what? Though? <laughs> I bet, I bet a lot of them friends that went to Florida. I bet their their mum, not knowing a rude way, but I bet their mum and dad were like, "Go and get on the rides, enjoy yourself." And I bet the time spent wasn't the quality of the time. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it's fun. It's great. And I think if you raise kids like that, and it's fun, that's perfect as well. But like. Yeah. There's a lot to be said with just the simplicity of time with yeah. people. Yeah. I noticed that when even with Phoenix now, like he, all he wants, he's he's time. happy. He doesn't need the newest this, whatever. It's just being present there, being engaging yeah. with them and, and giving them your time and attention. That's why I like I put my phones away and I'm like, because otherwise I'll just have it and I'll sit on the couch and he'll be playing and I'll be on my phone. And I'm like, yes, you, could, you, could, like you could physically see him play and he can watch you yeah. like, watch like, him play. Last year, even he came up to me and like I was sitting on my phone. You cut out, you cut out, you cut out. Oh, last year I was like just sitting on my phone watching TV, right? And he was just playing around and he comes over and he goes, grabs my phone. He goes, no, daddy. And pulled it out. Like, it was like kind of at that point, I was like, yeah, fuck this. Like, yeah, it's not mm, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And I've tried to make, be really conscious to, to be present there. Because I think our parents never had that thief. Yeah, you know, they didn't. Yeah, my yeah. didn't have a phone glued to his hand. Phone was on the wire. But, but, also, listen. That's I don't want to paint this rosy photo. My my fucking dad also was very very not present, but not because he wasn't present because he didn't care about us. He was just at work all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look, my right. my my dad was a very yeah. old fashioned. It was like dad went and worked, to mum. Was that's right on the kids, right? Yeah. Oh, then yeah. my mom did work, but it was like more. Um, I think nowadays 
I, I find as a parent now, it's like there's a lot more other like things are moving too quick. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is, even though you're on your phone, and I'm not saying that it's a good thing you're on your phone, you're ignoring it's your good kids. You're still there. I'm saying at least you're there. My dad would go to work and he would come home yeah. after an afternoon shift and be fucking worn out. Yeah, yeah. He would yeah. eat dinner like he would eat dinner and like go to bed. Yeah, that that's pretty much how it was, isn't it? Though that's a that's a it, very common theme, I think, in the generation prior. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. you're right in that it's it allows a better situation now. Yeah, but it can very easily. Yeah, I agree. Be just as bad. Yeah, I agree. Just, well, I'm not. I'm yeah. I'm sat in the fucking room, but I'm not here. Well, in a way, it's almost worse because I could make an excuse for my dad and be like, "He's at yeah. work." Whereas yeah. if you're sitting there in front of your kid, but you're just ignoring him, it's almost worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that- like when when I'm not around Phoenix, he doesn't give a shit what I'm doing. But yeah, when yeah. I'm in the room, like you've seen when he comes into the podcast, he's like, "Daddy, that like he said, what's Daddy doing?" Yeah. yeah Every yeah. time he's ever been here, yeah, he's tried to get in this. Yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, would you rather have to survive five minutes against John Jones or a full-grown wolf? John Jones. <laughs> John Jones is more deadly than the wolf. I'll, I'll take a bear instead. <laughs> well, let's look at. Let's think of this. I think no. I would. Ra- I think I would rather take five minutes with a wolf. Only because the wolf is going to size you up for a little while. You might yeah. actually, you might actually be able to scare it if you move around erratically and scream and shit. Whereas John Jones already knows he's going to kill you, and he will just come up and kill you. You're insane. I can maybe in the first ten seconds land a very, very lucky shot if no. the moon and stars align. No. Right. There's zero chance of that happening. Okay, there's, there's a very small chance, very small chance. But there is no fucking chance. You know how big a wolf is? You know how big my no, dog no, is? No, no, but this is what I'm saying, though. Think that about... wolf would make my dog look tiny. I know that. But what I'm saying is when you think of an animal attacking a person, they usually think about it for a few minutes. They don't just attack for no reason. They have to, like... All right, stop... you're locked in a cage. You're locked in a cage with a wolf. There's no sizing up. You're in a cage and it's... <laughs> it's hungry, bro. It just wants to eat you. Literally. Yeah. All, all but, people involved in this situation know the fight's about to happen. Okay, okay, you're right. I would take John Jones only because he's not going to eat me. He's just going to like choke me out. And leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can tap. Yeah, I'm not like tap. I'm better. <laughs> There's no teeth involved, which is a yeah. big, big factor in this conversation. <laughs> teeth and claws. Oh, the claw. uh, it's the claws more so. I can deal with. I can stay away from the head. But when the yeah. How no. fast? How fast or slow do you push the needle in when pinning? Jeez, these are getting really specific. I will. Mine's fast because I use insulin pins because yeah. I backload. So I just go dunk and it's in. But I wouldn't suggest that if you're using full size. I don't. I've, I've seen people full size and just literally. I'm like, mm. yeah, no, I'm not all that. I guess I no. if you if I had to pick fast or slow, I'm probably slow. Uh, is, it, is, it a, is it a little bit like sexual when you do it slow? No. Like, no, it's more painful. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> That's probably you can convince yourself not to when you do it slow. You can be like one third of the way in. You're like, nah, nah, nah. No, once Whereas... it once it pierces the skin, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah okay. So over. is that the same for sex? Once it pierces the yeah. Once it, once it, once you're in, you're in. Once the hel- once the helmet's in, you just have to continue. It's just there. <laughs> of course, of course you. Yeah. yeah when, you ever just. just... The... Just the tip of the whole thing. You're so, in. I, so I have a really weird... I'm really fucked up, so I have a weird question. I have one as well. I'm going to listen to yours first. <laughs> because we've been with our wives and girlfriends for so long, do you ever try really fucked up shit? Like, sometimes I have sex and I just fuck with just the tip and see how long I can fuck with just the tip. And if I could, fin- all, if I could finish... If I could finish... Them. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> don't mean that. I mean purposely, like yeah, 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 yeah. The the whole thing is available, but you just want a tip, bang. but I want to see if I could finish with just the tip. You could definitely finish with the tip. Them, I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she, nah, the, she, she, who cares about that? Because the tip's free. The tip's free. The tip's free. Sensitive. She's bucking around trying to get the whole thing in, and you're. I'm just, like, no, no, no. <laughs> you're not allowed the whole thing. <laughs> Portion control, love. Portion so you guys, control. Do you guys ever do shit like that or no? You're just like, you you don't have it. You play these little I, mind games. I think I did that uh, more so when I was younger and messing around more than. I, I don't really play around. I just do the job and get done as quick as possible and get the fuck you don't, out. You don't try and fuck around with any games? Not really, no. I'm too occupied with my t- 
tongue down her throat and penis all the way in, and I'm done. I'm do you, gone. Do you kiss every time you fuck? Yeah, but not like not like soft kiss. <laughs> not soft kiss, man. Like rapey it's a, kiss. It's a rape. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't kiss like. I don't. Sweet. I don't do lovey. I'm not like. I'm not like a fairy tale like fucking rape. Prince Charming. A rapey kiss, he says. Yeah, almost like you yeah. don't want to kiss me, but I'm going to kiss you anyway. <laughs> have that. Have my old crusty tongue. Like, a little bit of resilience is always fun. Oh. My question was going to be something really weird as well, because I was just thinking about it. Just as a man with a prostate and a woman's vagina feeling good on your bell end, would how good would it feel? Like, honestly, I have one to ten. Imagine you were getting you were getting bummed, and you're doing a woman in a vagina at the same time. Would it be really good? You're starting to worry me a little bit, James. <laughs> no, but that's a genuine question. Is that like next level climax? I don't know. You, what, you would gonna... what would happen? James, James let, let us know on the next podcast. I'm please. not. I think Ian, we can ask to maybe do that one. Because <laughs> you know, it's only gay for gay, so he doesn't mind. But I genuinely do wonder how good that must fucking feel. But how do you know how good if Have you ever had... I, I don't want no, it's meant, to... But it's meant to be in it because there's the, the G spot, bro. A I've spot. never tested it. I've never tested it to know if it feels good. Would you let your missus peg you and you do her at the same time? No. Ben? Yeah. Listen, there's one... Then Ben needs to do this for us. No, 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 no. So, so here's the thing. So a lot of what I... Fuck it. A lot of what I need is for them to enjoy it. Yeah. Feedback like they're into it. Yeah, and Ben's, I feel like Ben's really like a fucking weirdo that way. He wants them to have as much fun as possible. Yeah, I need them to be like, "This is ridiculously good," and then I'm like, "She yeah, would like it." She, I, I think, I think that'd be fun. I, I, I want that too, but not at my expense. No, it's not my expense because if I see that, it eggs me on, it pushes me. But, but so I'm like, cool. I'm just thinking, like you know, like you said, you try fucked up stuff. Like maybe you get to a point later in life, you're like, you know, what? I just want like a next level fucking orgasm. Maybe I just need to take something in the ass while I bang my bird. Are you, I mean, maybe, I'm maybe I've just got to swallow my pride and get pegged. Careful what you're swallowing. Uh, I, you know what it is, James. I feel like I come from a very traditional home. <laughs> so this, is what Yannick, have, this is exactly what Yannick would say. Oh, we have we have very like, you know, me and some, me and some are pretty traditional people. Like we, you know, I like to fuck around in bed. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like it would take away a lot of my masculinity if she was like had me bent over. I would feel pretty. I'm not bad. saying you have to be bent over because you're. You, well, no, how the you're fuck are you going to do it then? Just reach around, lay down, lay on your back. Oh, my ears up, my ears, the legs up behind my ears. That's <laughs> that's really that's, masculine. Yeah. That's so unmasculine. That's like the least masculine. <laughs> fuck like that. I, yeah, yeah, well, what yeah. are you going to do? You're going to get on top and ride the thing. Oh, like, oh. No, I'm saying I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm not going to do it because I don't think. There's no, a way. It doesn't, yeah, for me to feel masculine. The thing is, the, the problem is, even if it was, let's say it was great. Afterward, afterwards, you're gonna, she's gonna look at you, look kind of fucking weird. No, she might be like, <laughs> you're gonna have to what? sit in the shower for about an hour, scrub, <laughs> like just <laughs> sitting on the floor in shame, just like, oh, <laughs> it was good, but oh, but I feel horrible about myself now. <laughs> maybe it's like, maybe it could be. I'm gonna have to do that. Maybe it's like a, 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 a when you drink only. What? You know, like when you've had a drink only, you're not allowed to. Do, you can't do it unless you've had a little whiskey or two. Yeah, because then you're not thinking about how you're going to feel afterwards. Yeah, inhibitions need yeah. to be a little bit gone out the window by that point. A little bit gone, yeah. You just anyway. To, I'm not saying I've had this done. I'm not saying I want this done. I'm just killing. I don't know, it out James. There. I don't know. That was pretty Dude, just, like. I just have interests in knowing how things could be. What's the height? What's the highest level of experience you can experience? You know, like jump. What's the highest you can jump off and it feel good? What's I the, don't think there's a. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think there's. I don't think there's like. I don't think you can reach it. But you right, know, so listen, you know, wait, wait, wait. Can I say something? One thing, Ben. Sorry. You know, like when you're about. You know, when you're like coming and it just feels nice. Imagine you had that twice in your body, like two lots of that. Like, oh, like what did you do? <laughs> Why would you have it twice? You're still gonna have it. Surely once. that's what it does in your anus. No, it's still gonna be one load. No, but I mean the sensation of like stimulation. Like a, the, the, like, yes, the... yes, like a. Oh, James, God. James, is, yeah, look, that's what's going to happen. And then you're going to have Freeze your heart up. attack and die. You're going to have your heart attack and die. That's, and you're gonna be like, that's literally right. Right. So if I'm, you know, when I go, that's what's going to happen. Be... Yeah, this is the best. But oh. wait, okay, wait, can we just for be serious for one second? There is no, there is no reaching a peak. I don't know if the, that's what I'm saying, but what is the highest you can go with it? There is no highest. That's what I'm trying to say. Like sexually, that's why you see people finding like, 
the weirdest shit possible on porn sites and stuff because I think your people are always who's that? I thought Yannicka was gone. No, Yannicka's not gone yet. Eleventh, eleventh oh. April. Hi, Yannicka. So bend your head in and just say hello to be polite, okay? Hello. She's had a haircut. Uh, She's looking short. Look at ah, I like your hair. It looks great. Hair looks great. Thank you. J- James wants to be pegged. I want to be pegged. <laughs> No. Peg me. No. 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 Peg me while I do you. No. You're so fucked up. <laughs> okay. Maybe later. No. <laughs> you can leave now. <laughs> anyway, my, my point is, I don't think you can ever reach a peak. Yeah, it's a it's a slippery slope. Basically, you're trying to. I think, but should I think that it's... should that stop you from trying though? No. What I'm saying is, I think it's actually the reverse. I think the less sexual you get, the more you enjoy sex because you're not searching for this like super high. It's like, imagine this. Imagine you watch porn every fucking day and you've seen all the worst shit in the world and like you've seen every type of sex possible and you try and do it with your fucking girl. Eventually, you're just going to be desensitized to it all. It's going to be like, well, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what's the next? What do you do next? So I feel like if I feel like if you didn't watch any porn and you just, kind of like abstained from being crazy then when you had any kind of sex it's it nice. would feel it would feel incredible yeah that's like saying that's like saying don't use anadrol or trend because you'll like it too much and then you're going to want to use it more but that's true because if you or, use... or don't eat pizza and then when you do eat pizza but that's, yeah, but yeah that's don't, don't eat nice food but that's a perfect example because if i eat pizza every day it by, the, shit. by the seventh day i'm like this sucks so don't peg every day just peg on sundays Peg on the holy day. Uh, by the way, that that should not... be, that should be the title. That should be the title of the of this episode. Just peg, peg on, on Sundays. Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it. My whole point is, I don't think. Yeah, Pete. You can do Pete, pizza and pegging on on Sundays. Okay. There you go. That's your new. What is it when you go to a, a church and you you tell them the things you've been doing wrong? What's it Conf- called? Confession. Confession. Confession and peg <laughs> on the same day. No, peg, peg, it, peg, peg, then peg, peg you have to peg first and then confess. Yeah. <laughs> well, because the, the peg's like, it's like the little, it's like that punishment for your confession. Oh, I see. So you're confessing. So you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, is the, so is the priest pegging? Is that where we're going with this? This is going to go, we're going to go down a... Yeah, let's not. <laughs> can we just move on, please? Jesus Christ. Let's move on. We got... Uh... If a man sleeps, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, you want me to read it? <laughs> James wants to hear about this man. I'm just, I'm just wondering if he's going to ask something we just asked. If a man sleeps with a tra- transgender man who's fully operated down there as a woman, what? does it make the guy gay or not? No, not at all. Not at all. I would do a transgender man that's turned to a woman if I didn't know if it had a vagina. If it's... I didn't know, if I know none of the wiser. No, no, you do know. No, you know. Oh, even if I knew and they were pretty, then I wouldn't care. Like, if Yannick like, used to have a cock, I don't care. Like, she used to be called Trev and still got the voice. I don't I don't think I would... If they were attractive and I liked their personality and they had a vagina now, I don't think I'd be that fussed. I know Flair's going to say... Long, long t- you didn't one say night anything. Flair's going to be like, I wouldn't, but... I don't no, know, I, I just, didn't. I, I'm actually thinking about it. I'm not saying I, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's... It bothered me much. Does that include a relationship or are you talking just one night? He's gonna take a bite, take a bite to think about it. <laughs> I don't think he heard me. Do you hear me, James? Well, I hear, I hear you. He's trying to think about it. He said, "Is it a one night or a relationship?" Yeah, yeah. Does it matter? Like, does that change the how comfortable you are about? No. Uh, good. I wonder if this has ever happened. This is another thing in this situation. I wonder if a man has ever fallen in love with another man, but not attracted to men, attracted to the person. It's like, can you get a transgender, please, so I can fuck you? No, because I don't think men fall in love with other men. I think men that are like like a man that much just become best friends. Yeah, but what if the man is like pretty flamboyant and comes across very feminine, and you're like, wow, I'm actually that's, kind of attracted to you, but you have got a cock and I can't touch you. That's gay. Then I think you're gay. Yeah, but what if yeah. you don't like cocks? What if you're like, I don't actually want your cock, I want you to have a because, vagina? Because you, 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 you don't have to like a cock to be gay. You could just like a man. Yeah, but you kind of need to like a cock because it's going to be put inside you at some point. No, if I like no, a man... No, necessarily. If you're the train and he's the tunnel, you never have to get fucked. Let's say I like a man with a micro penis. It's like this fucking big, right? And so I don't... If you mm-hmm. like the man, you're gay. It doesn't matter if you like his cock or not. <laughs> I'm just wondering, how far does it go like before you're considered... A gay man or a straight man? Because I, I don't know. It's weird. I would think you. I would think it was worse. To be honest with you, I think <sighs> if a guy, I think if a guy liked a dick, 
but didn't like men. That's I, would con- I would consider him less gay. <laughs> Listen, I would consider him less gay than if he actually liked and loved just touching a man and kissing a man and all that. That's fucking weird to me. Yeah. But I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's been like lesbians that once one of them was a man before and they're like, can you become a lesbian as well? So we're both women. And then they happily ever after lesbians. Wait, like, I think I, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to answer is I think people do transgender sometimes to fit into the relationship they wish to have with their partner. So That's you're happened, saying, so you're saying two gay guys met. I'm saying any sex, any sex. No, 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 no. I'm just giving you, I'm giving, I'm yeah. giving you a hypothetical. So two gay okay, guys yeah. meet. Well, no, two. but maybe I'm not, this is what I'm trying to say is one of them. What well, if one of them doesn't actually, isn't really gay, but he's like, I like this person's everything about them and who they are. Okay. And if they were, if they were a woman, I would tap that ass. That's so great. That's I'm just saying, <laughs> like, you, it's in the realms of possibility, lads. Like, you can't. No, you get, no, no it's no, not. No, because no, no, you you go. This is a this is my friend, and I'm friends with him up to the point where I want to turn it physical, and at that point, it's now gay. Yes. Well, if I was like Ben, man, if you had long hair and a vagina, I'd totally smash. Then he would think you're gay. There's, there's that be like, yeah, definitely. You would be actually. You would be gay. Okay. Right? That's all I was it's, after. The answer. It's, it's kind of like. Like me and Paul are best friends. We've been best friends for 25 years. Just if I said, Paul, can you get a vagina? Please? If I said, Paul, can you cut your dick off? That would make me gay. Okay. Yeah, but right? then you're not, you're no longer playing with cock. So I don't, it's weird, isn't it? But like, I like, it's but, oxymoronic. I, but, but I like a man. No, but you like Paul's personality. Yeah, but I like a man. I'm still attracted to a man. <laughs> yeah, but what if you, sexually you're not though? But that's why he's getting you, sex change. Yeah, yeah, why exactly, would you exactly. Then so you're turn- but you're you're getting a sex change to become a woman. I mean, the, it's the, that's what minute, like. the minute it turns it, physical, it takes on a different aspect. Okay, so that's the thing I'm trying to wonder. Where's the line between physical and emotional? Like, you can emotionally like someone, love someone, but you don't physically find them attractive until they get the sex organ that you wish them to have. Strange, Even if isn't Paul, it? if Paul cut his dick off tomorrow and had a vagina, I still wouldn't fuck him. No, you, I'm not saying you fancy him. I'm not saying that. I'm saying what if you did? But I would never fancy, like, I don't look at men that way, so I would never be like, oh, if this guy just had a pussy, I would fuck the hell out of him. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never nice. looked at a man. I've never looked at a man. Look, Brad Pitt is a beautiful man, but I've never looked at Brad Pitt and thought, man, if he had a vagina. Yeah, vagina. <laughs> I don't. Well, I don't. tell you what. The next, the next time you watch a film and Brad Pitt's in it, that's going to jump into your head for a split <laughs> second, and you go, "Fuck it, James." <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of just like thinking that there's people out there that have felt that way, and I want them to comment below after. <laughs> so you I want to think... see, I want to see some comments of people like, "Yeah, man, I've got this friend," and you know, I've really. <laughs> so you really... think? So you think two guys have become friends and they like each other's company so much? One guy said to the other guy, "Hey, you know what? If you just get a sex change, being you can get married." Yeah. I think that's definitely happened. No definitely. way, one hundred percent. Fucking way. There's no way. Ben, I reckon you. Because that would mean because well. that would mean both guys would have had to have been gay and not known it. I don't know what it means. That's the problem. I don't know what it means. But that's what it means. It means both guys would have had to have been gay and not known. But 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 why would any? What I'm wondering is why if if that is the situation. And, and if they're wait a minute, and if why would both, you need to get a sex change? But that's what my whole point is. If they were both gay, they wouldn't care. They'd be like, you know what, just let's fuck. Yeah, it's a gay relationship. Yeah, then, don't. yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. What if, what if the relationship? So why isn't would he way, need? Though? Why would he need to, his partner to get a sex change if he finds him attractive anyway? But, no, hang on, hang on. I bet there there has to be a situation where there's yeah, there does have a to be. straight man yeah with a gay trans girl. No, 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 don't change it yet. A get a, a straight man is friends with a gay man, and they're really good friends, yeah. right? Okay, and then the straight man so off the gay man. So the straight, so the straight, <laughs> straight man says to the gay guy, "If you get a sex change, we can be together." You think that's yeah. happened? No, yeah, no, I, no. I know. I I think the probability Definitely of happened, seven plus billion people in the world that's probably happened. Yeah, James, it's, James, it's, James it's not, listen, Fuad, Fuad, it's happening right now, bro. Someone right now, <laughs> they're literally going under the knife right now to be with the person. No, because the guy, if the guy wants to be with his best friend who's gay, he's just going to be like, fuck it. I'll just be with you. No, no, not, no, no. Because you'd be like, well, really, not necessarily. I really like, or, or you could have someone that's like, why would you make, if I'm, listen, if I'm friends with a gay guy and we're, we're like best friends and then he's like, hey, I'm attracted to you. And I feel the inclination that I'm like, you know what? I'm attracted to you also. No, no, you're no. You're, gonna, you're, 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 no, you're, you're like, 
I could be attracted to you if you had a vagina. That yeah, would I'm never fucking... happen. Because it might happen. No, because if the guy is attracted to the gay guy, he's just gonna fuck him in the butt. I don't know, man. No, he's not attracted to physic- he's not attracted to him physically, but oh, we get on no. so well. Imagine see, if you had Ben's understanding imagine, if you had, imagine if you had big titties and long hair and your lips done and a vagina, this would be perfect. And then the other guy's like the gay guy's like, Well, I'm open to that anyway. Hmm. Yeah, but the gay guy to... is going to be offended. He's just going to be like, I want to find somebody who loves me for me. He's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go get a sex change so we can be together. I'm that's super cool. interested to hear. Or he was, or the gay guy was like, oh, that's excellent. I was hoping to get have blonde hair one day. This works well. <laughs> there is somewhere that's, right now. None the of this, are none this, of this makes, makes sense. sense. No, none of this <laughs> makes sense. None of this makes sense. I feel like Ben's with me on this one. No, you guys are yeah, both I'm wrong. Yeah, He's come around. No, man. Yeah. If the gay yeah. guy's gonna fuck the other guy, they're just gonna fuck anyway. They're not gonna. He's not gonna make him get a sex change. He's still a right. man. Well, I hope someone has gone through this and gets in the comments after and says, "Guys, I'm that guy. Can you interview me?" <laughs> yeah, no, no. You know, it's just similar to you and your Harley. You're modifying it. And you're like, no. you buy your Harley, and you're like, Absolutely. yeah, but I want to make it. I want to make it a little better. So I'm gonna put carbon fiber on it. I'm gonna do this. No, this is like the, no, like that's the not the same thing. Like, oh, I like you. The the your engine block is really nice, but I want to change your no. fender. I don't want to put this. Like, no, you yeah. know what the same thing as that would be is if you got a girl and you're like, I'm gonna buy you titties. That's the same thing. Not you meet a guy and you're like that happens and that does happen all the time. That happens all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's normal because yeah. it's still the same person, it's still right. the same so, sex. Yeah, okay, but you can say to the fellow then, be like, all right, we'll keep your face and it's just some wax and titties on there. No. Just so f- <laughs> uh, anyone that is and, and, and then, uh, that's, I, that's this, this was this was I think you not this was a genuine question for me because I do like to think about everything and I genuinely <laughs> have thought about that question. So it's not me trying to create any. Listen, I'm not not creating any issues. I'm just just telling you what is happening. I'm just telling you. Okay, I'm going to give my final opinion. We'll move on, and And you guys guys give your no, no. You guys give your final opinion after. This is my final thought on it. If a guy is friends with a gay guy and they're best friends and they love being together, and the gay guy says to the straight guy, "Hey, you know what? We'd be a great couple." If the straight guy is at all inclined to take him up on his offer. They're just going to be fucking gay together. He's not nah. going to be like, he's not going to be like, hey, you know what? If you got a pussy, I'd be with you. There will be a small percentage of people. I bet you there's that, one. Exa- at that least exa- one they're exactly that. that There'll yeah, be people that get I, to that I, conversation, I, won't they, Ben? They get to that exact conversation. And at that point where you stopped, the other one goes, great, I'll do it if you get a sex change. <laughs> You know what? You know what as well? Because there's there must have been there's, there's there's plenty of examples, I'm sure, where there's a straight guy and a gay guy that are best friends, right? And then they get on mushrooms and they're on a bit of a trip and they've had this conversation. I, I guarantee this is this has happened. Well, it's got the phone sure. out. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> no. He's texting Paul. He's texting Paul and asking him. I say, Paul, will you get tits? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, can we get you a pair of double D's? <laughs> what anyway, the fuck? I thought, I thought that was uh well, it's, a, it's a valid question. I just can't. I can't. I'm sure somewhere you guys are right. I'm sure somewhere in the eight billion people on earth, one that's probably it just uh, eight billion, I think, isn't it? Eight billion. That's what I said. Eight billion, didn't I? Yeah, I don't saying? know if we said eight billion. Oh, no, I meant eight billion. It's a lot of people, isn't it? Uh, okay. Let's see. Are you superstitious or have been in the past? If yes, what was it? <laughs> I, don't I don't think I am. Yeah, I am super. I am superstitious. I actually, uh, I used to wear my dad's ring when I'd go on stage because I thought it gave me good luck. So that's a that's a superstition. It's a superstition. And, it's also a comfort, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess it could be comfort too. Yeah, mm. but um, I don't think I've really had. I don't think I've ever been really superstitious. I, mean, I had that kind of relationship with possessions that have been given to me by people I love, so they have them around for like that good aura. But I don't know if it's because I consider them actually giving me luck. I don't know. Yeah, but I do I don't get know. it. Yeah. I think I like, it's a, go ahead, sorry. No, no, I, was just, I think that's a, a good superstition to have. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm like a full believer in superstitions. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just comfort. Isn't a full believer in superstition someone that like, sees a black cat and says, oh, shit, bad luck's coming? Yeah, I'm not that kind of... You know, yeah, like there's levels, isn't there, of superstition? Yeah. I See the same I, cat I twice, think... you're in the Matrix kind of thing. Like, oh, shit. I think I believe in karma, though. Karma is a real thing, though. Karma is a real thing, I believe, as well. I know people think karma is immediate, but I don't think it's immediate. I think karma will get you 
and sometimes well, it could take time. Yeah, it'll get you when it I should. Thought, I thought I thought that was the the widely accepted thought. That it no, was. I think a lot of people think karma is immediate. Like this person fucked me over. How come nothing happened to them? But I I don't think it's like the, like an immediate oh, no, like, like that. Yeah. yeah. But That's... I think some people think that, and I'm like, no, it it, it something it's, somewhere. It's, is sometimes gonna... it's got to stew for a little while, man. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's, I, 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 it's also that that's just the the probability of life, though, right? If someone lives long enough, something bad's going to happen to them, and then you go, "Oh, that's because you did something fifty years a, ago." Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I'm like, "Is karma real, or is it just how we explain things?" Nah, it's not, nah, it's, I've, yeah, it's, there, well, 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 there's different karma. It's there's, there's karma like there's like gang related karma. You shoot someone in one gang, the other one comes and cuts your fucking head off. Well, that's just retaliation. That's, that's, that's straight that's retaliation, not, like yeah, karma. Yeah, that's like bitch, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> but. Yeah. And then there's like the way of the world karma that you believe it's the energy of the universe karma, you know? Yeah, that's kind of the karma I'm talking about. Because I know I've done things in my life that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And then something bad's happened to me. And I'm like, I wonder, and I don't know, I don't attribute it directly, but I'm like, I wonder if that was because I did this thing over here. Mm. So that's why I try not to fuck around with people too much anymore. Because I'm like, mm. I believe that it will come back at you at some point. Yeah. So, I do as well. I think there's certainly an energy thing like a transmission of energy if you're bad your energy can attract the bad come back you know i sure. think i think of john right mm. when i think of john i'm like the guy was fucking nice to everybody and you know obviously his life ended short unfortunately but he had a great life while he was here like he mm. he achieved everything he wanted he had a great family life he had you know financial stability like he had everything everything and i'm like you wonder sometimes I'm like is that just because he's a good person Mm. Is it... it's like the other side of it isn't it a little bit yeah but then, but then the flip side of that is like the argument is well then he was so good like he died so why did, early why did the good ones go it's that like, question that... I, I do believe in I don't yeah, want to call it karma that's, but, that's but, true too like you believe in karma I believe in karma to like in a way like it comes around but I don't think karma is ever fair I don't think it a balance Oh, you mean like if I do something bad, like I'll I'll receive the equivalent negative thing? Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. it's that. I don't think you go, oh, no. hey, well, you did this, and that's worth that much. So in ten years' time, you're gonna get. No, mm. I don't. I don't think that either. I think if you just if you fuck with people, you are gonna get fucked with, not mm. necessarily by those same people, but the world somehow will balance you out. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like you can't. I don't feel like you can go through life. It's like this. Sometimes you see. <clears throat> I'll give you a good example. Sometimes you see a business person, right? And they have really shitty business practices, but they get ahead. They're making tons of money. They're very, very wealthy. Their business is very, very successful. But then you find out that their home life is dog shit. Mm. They, their, their kids hate them or their wife hates them. or And you're like, that's the karma. You fucked over all these people to get your business to this level. And so life has found a way to to get yeah. back, at, back at you in a different way. So that's kind of what I mean is like, yeah, yeah. You, the life, it's almost like life always balances itself out. Mm. So I feel like if you're just good to people and you don't lie and you're not a fucking scumbag, then you should live a relatively peaceful life. Well, what it is, is that it's like your actions leave yourself either in a position where no one is um, keen to attack you yeah. or that you leave people in a place where they never wish to attack you or only support you. Yeah. So it's kind of like that as well. It's just, you know, but straight I, that, up how you treat people. So the karma is, you, 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 karma is never, like I say, is fair because you've done something in order to put people in a position where they want to attack you. Often. But, I, but I think that's more on a conscious level. I'm a, I'm a, I mean it more on a subconscious level. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like I said with the business guy, right? Like he, had really bad business practices. And that's to, not direct. Like you say, yeah, he's yeah. not doing, that's not what makes him bad with his family at home. That's right. But yeah. it's, you know. It's somehow life balanced it out where yeah. it's like you, yeah. so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But superstition wise, I don't really have anything I'm like a true believer in. Like, when, when I was younger, Fuad, like I would, there's certain flowers I would see, like if they were, there's certain flowers, I think it was, it we have here, uh, Ben, in England. They, I don't know, used to catch them and blow them and make a wish. They're like this. Daisy, isn't it? No, oh, not Daisy. Is... No, no, no. no. Um, you mean the white ones? I don't know. Yeah, the ones that are like just like furry looking. And you blow it and then you'd make a little wish. Like when I was younger, I used to have that kind of approach to life in regards to superstition. Dandelions. Yeah, dandelion. Yeah, dandelion. Look at what I look at, look at what I searched. Look. Wish flower. I bet you furry plant that you blow. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, I'd used to find them. And I would wish for like positive things. 
So I obviously believed in some sort of superstition. Yeah, but how old are you? You're not like 30 years old doing that. You're not fucking walking around the No, but I was definitely... I, I, <laughs> we'll still do it today. I got growing in the garden. Um, I know, but I was old enough to consciously know that it's just a fucking flower. But yeah, I still feel inclined to do it. I think I, I used to. My mum used to do the uh, eyelash. You ever do that thing where she's like, oh, bl- like, you've got oh, an eyelash. Oh, yeah, yeah, you blow on it. You yeah. blow it and you make a wish kind of shit. Mm. I think I remember, look, I remember doing stuff like throwing pennies in a wishing well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't, I never really believed in that shit. Or like, you still waiting on that fucking yacht, hey? I know. I'm like, what the fuck, man? No, so yeah. Karma's in It's a funny one. It? It's, it's so funny because, like, when we're talking about superstition, like throwing a coin in a well, it's a very similar sensation of feeling to praying. You know, asking for you know for some help nah, or for some not, support. Not, it, no, not for me. Yeah, because it's different for you, isn't it? So for me, because I'm not sure what I, I'm not sure what I believe. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I like that's why I think my superstition and my want to believe are both very high. Yeah. Because I, I, I want. I'm not sure if anything is like truthful or not. So I approach them more on a sense that I believe, um, I believe it's worth putting it out there just in case. You know, I, yeah. I, will, I I sometimes pray because I believe, you know, I've got like, Ben, I've got a picture of Luke there and I still talk to the picture, you know, and I put it out there and I don't know whether I'm getting a response in life. I talk to my mum's pictures and I still do it. I still pray a little bit. I don't know where I'm praying, but it's the same with that thing. It's like discomfort. Um, I don't have evidence, but I still do it. So I don't, I don't believe in a religion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I have well, Luke's pictures up there. Yeah. And then in the gym, I have two pictures of Luke and if I get under a squat, I literally will look up. I don't say it out loud, but in my head, I'm like, come in there, Luke. Go and let's have this, you cunt. And I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've done that because I have John's banner and look, Luke's... John and Luke's one as well. Luke's banner. So I've done that before. They're both... One's in front of the squat pro and one's in front of the leg press. Yeah. I've yeah. done that. I do... But that's a, little, that's a little different for me, I think. Yeah, but you are, you have more of a, a specific religious approach, don't you, like, in regards to how you approach... No, religion? no, I'm, I'm not real. I'm, no, I'm not actually very... I'm not... I'm not. First of all, I'm not. Definitely don't practice religion. But as far as okay. like, as far as believing in it, uh, I don't know if I believe in religion either. But do I believe in something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the point I was going to make is like when I do the wishing well thing, mm. that's like a fleeting thought. I'm like, okay. uh, I wish I had a car one day, and then I would be mm. like, walk away and not give a fuck, right? But if you catch me praying, you generally, I'm like something's wrong, and I'm really yeah. trying to fucking pray for Reach a reason. Out, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or if like. <laughs> You know, I think we had a conversation a couple of podcasts ago, about, or maybe one or two ago, I think about death and about if there's something after death and if if, mm. pe- if there's actually spirits or whatever. It's very, very strange. I'll go to the park with my dog. Yeah. That's where I talk to my mom. Yeah. Specific there's, no, place. there's no picture or anything of her, but it's just like the sky is really clear and shit. And I'll, yeah. be, I'll be with the dog. And is, it, is it like a, a connection to like earth? It's like earth itself is yeah. kind of. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I don't know, but I'm kind of like you that way. I'm like, I don't know if anybody can hear me. Mm. but i'm like just in case yeah right so i like i like that way of being though i do like that at yeah. least that i like that at least that is there yeah because yeah. imagine not even having that but like, i don't know if that's that's only a self-comfort or if that's a reality because i don't know i don't know i don't know either because if somebody asked me like hey what happens when you die but like your eyes close and that's it mm. but then i also feel like that's shitty to feel because i've had so many close people pass in the last three yeah. or four years so i'm like yeah. i don't i don't want to feel that way at the same time but uh, but it, that that feeling right there it's that's why i'm so cynical about religion because i believe that's why humans have created a religion and created enough life because it's shitty to think otherwise for comfort mm. yeah for comfort yeah yeah that's why I, that's where i sit with it i always but you know what that... go oh, ahead sorry, sorry. no no go, go ahead go, go, i was just gonna say but you know what like the fact that we sometimes do look at these pictures of people lost or think about them, even that act in itself, I think is, is a really important act to be done for the remembrance and for the, the longevity of someone's legacy and who they are and what they meant to you, you know, like, well, that's how it, like a yeah. lot of, a lot of past cultures believed in, like you stayed alive based on your legacy and, you know, mm-hmm. you've seen the film like, yeah. like Troy. It's like no one who's going to remember your name yeah. in a yeah. thousand years, right? And it's mm-hmm. like if yeah. you do something great, that's that's your afterlife. If mm-hmm. people are talking about you still, yeah. yeah kind of... But I think that's that's tough too to to quantify it that way because the majority, the vast majority, the large majority of people on Earth are never going to be talked about after they're dead, except for by their closest closest people, right? Like yeah. 
we we for example will still talk about luke because he's a major figure in bodybuilding and yeah i mean you guys are friends with him but i mean people outside of us yeah we'll, we'll still know of and you know, they know of and, and talk about, about yeah. luke, or like cedric or john or yeah but like if you talk about my mom it's just my mom nobody's, it's actually less people then isn't it when it's closer to home yeah nobody's talking about my mom except me yeah so it's yeah. like i don't know if if I believe like the amount of people talking about it or that way or any of that matters, I think it's, yeah, I think it's more individual than anything, but I don't know. Oh, I don't think what about, what about, what about, yeah, but what about also like maybe this, let's say you did decide to, let's say you decided to adopt a child, you, you guys, who had, would you then share teachings almost somewhat of how your mother was with you and try to get them to know who she was, even though she's not present? Of Would course. you feel that's important? Yeah, so that's kind of like, I think that's the difference. When it's in your family, that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. pass well, it down. That's more my religion, right? It's my family. Like how I how I treat my family, how what my family think of me. As long as, if my family think I'm a good person, and that to me is what I'm fo- hyper-focused on. Whereas yeah. a lot of like, a lot of, I mean, a lot of my extended family are Christian. They're like, they want to be good Christians. Yeah, I'm more focused on me on being a good dad and a good father. Like mm-hmm. that's a good husband. Yeah, that's about as much as I can cope with thinking about uh, yeah, a higher front, front. Yeah, on your front. Yeah, I Fair think enough. that's that's kind of where I was going with it earlier. Is I feel like as long as I'm a good person. When I say as long as I'm a good person, I mean like the people that know me. Mm. As long as they know I'm not a shitty person, then I You're feel malicious. Like so yeah, I feel like I've done my job. That's like a friend, a friend of mine said this today. Yeah, a friend of mine. Uh, who's you know they make their money their way they make their money. They're like, you know what, life's just a journey. It's A to Z, and I'm not gonna like. They don't make their money in a bad bad way, but it might not be the best way. Yeah. But they're like, I'm not gonna like overly concern myself with if I get to my grave whether my actions determine whether I'm a good person or not. You know, as long as I'm not like hurting people. So what I'm trying to say, I suppose, is just like this over reliance of being goody two shoes is is also not something that we should all too much focus on either no um, you know yeah but i don't mean, time, on the opposite I, end of the book i'm not saying you're trying to be that i'm just saying like sometimes in life moral conscience is important yeah but like it's almost like uh, we just gotta get from a to z and and enjoy ourselves and not but, but the biggest the biggest thing for me is when i lay down at night do I have peace of mind? Yeah, if, as long as you, like, yeah, if you haven't hurt people, you know what I mean. Process, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's the, that is a very important factor. Um, That's kind of what I mean. Is like it's not. Look, everybody's not going to like you, and everybody's not going to be your friend. Precisely. But as, but as long as I can go to bed at night yeah. knowing I I didn't do anybody wrong, yeah, then I go to bed peacefully. Right. That's, That's that, the, and that, yeah. that, that that what you said there is exactly how the discussion was today. It's like yeah. not everyone's going to like you. You know, maybe some people don't like what your your business is or whatever you do. Yeah. yeah. Like if you you can get to the end of your lifetime and you're content and you're happy with what you've done, yeah. And you haven't hurt anyone along the way, then fuck it. Like you know. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. It's that little voice in your head, you know. As long as you can, because that little voice in your head knows all your deep dark secrets. Yeah. You know, everything not... you did, everything you didn't do. As long as I've got nothing to hide from that person. Double thumbs up. That's funny because that little fucking voice is the one that will never fucking lie to you. You know, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Well, you can't lie to it. You can't lie um, to um, it. Imagine, you know that little voice. Imagine if that little voice was spoken out loud every day, and you couldn't, <laughs> and, and you couldn't, and you couldn't shut it off. And everyone knew what your little voice was saying. How different the world I would think, be if everyone had to do that. But maybe that's what Yannicka is, right? <laughs> Isn't Yannicka like that? I think no, very close to that. Yes, I don't think yeah. many things that Yannicka's little voice says don't come out. Yeah. Maybe they, things would be better. Maybe, yeah. Maybe from a like. A I think. Standpoint. I think it would. I think it would sting a little more. But I think it'd be for the best. But I think if if people were conditioned to know that that's what was going on, then eventually it wouldn't sting. You'd be like, okay, well, I know yeah. exactly how this person thinks. Yeah. I know exactly. Does, what does, does, you know, like I'm. I'm quite interested in Tourette's. Like, does Tourette's is Tourette's based on your actual thoughts or is it just random? I want it like you know some of the things you say. Did you see the if, thing I I posted? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. And I think it's like funny, like. But I do wonder, like, is that kind of a level of what we're discussing here? Is that like a lot of that the little voice, or is it not? Is it just thought? But then thought is voice. I, think, I don't know what is fucking. Hell, I'm getting lost. I'm going fuck this. Uh, I, I think a lot. I, I think a lot of that comes from in certain situations they know they shouldn't say something and then they, yeah. But when you know you shouldn't say something, is that not the little voice? Sometimes? I don't think Tourette's. Is, I don't think Tourette's is the same thing as what we're talking yeah. about. Speaking your mind, yeah, being yeah. honest. Yeah. 
No, but as I say, then the only way that I would feel confident with that is maybe if I did have Tourette's, because then I can say, "Well, I've got Tourette's." I'm not even talking about. I'm not even talking about saying things to people. I'm just talking about like when a situation arises and you have to make a choice. Oh, of you, course. Do you make the choice that allows you to sleep well at night, knowing you made a, the positive choice, or do you make the choice that suits you best, but maybe hurts a whole bunch of other fucking people? And you know oh, absolutely. I mean? like, I, I'm just, I'm just um, proposing the question. What if you know those those thoughts you initially have to have? What if they were presented out loud and like people knew which one was your first thought? I present them. Not... Out, I, I present them out loud to Ben. I call Ben. I'm like, oh, good, 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 good. A and B. What do you think? What one? Not B, bro. Not B. You can get cancelled. <laughs> Fuck that. But no, if I have, yeah, there are times. Listen, everybody, everybody has has self serving thoughts. There are times when I'm like, this thing would make my life a lot easier, but it might mm. affect this other person. Yeah. And this thing is going to make my life harder, but it's the right thing to do. Do you know the fucking mm. thing about that? Like, like the one unique thing about that is, do you know the only, I think the only person or the only thing that has that trait is humans. Yeah. Well, animals just I be, do. I, be, do I believe, they're... I believe the animals function purely on like reaction yeah. instinct. Yeah. We're the only thing that can pause for a moment, stop, consider and change our mind. Well, I don't think animals... there, might, there might, there might be other people that say animals can do that to a certain degree, but I don't know. No, but I don't. I think the main difference, and I could be wrong about this, but I think the main difference between animals and people is we think past and present, whereas animals, yeah. only, or sorry, only past, and fu- past and yeah, future. Yeah, the only thing anim- is present animals is, only yeah. think about now. Like I got to eat now. I'm I gotta gonna. Eat. Uh, you cut to out. Do, like, you cut out. No, like my dog will know. Like, oh, I I did that before and I got in trouble. I'm not doing that again. That's how you teach an animal. No, no, but right? they but they live. I'm not in saying the moment, learning in the moment. They, yeah, like when you take a pride of lions, they're not thinking like. Well, I better save this meal for next week because I might. Yeah, have okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so animals, like you say, instinct. It's always logical, right? They're always acting on the what makes sense. I think yeah. humans can act, and they have emotion, and then that over yeah. supersedes logic. Right? Agree. Agree. You, humans saying, are fascinating. I agree with that, but do you think animals think about the past and the future? I don't think they run on emotion. I think I don't think I don't think their decision making is based on. Emotion, and I don't think they can use emotion to overrule logic. But what I'm saying, can. but what I'm saying is, I don't think their decision making is based on anything that's going to happen later. Like they're not, they're not. No, I think, think if like, you look at monkeys, monkeys will know. Okay, there's if I do this, I'll get that banana over there. Like they can figure things out. Like they, yeah. they can learn and. Process. I think I think it's just I think more so it's the emotional standpoint. Yeah, yeah, they can't. They, they can't. Yeah. They, they can never use emotion to overrule logic. Like yeah. logic will always be good. Okay. Okay. We're not animal experts on this channel. We just thought yeah. we'd dive into that. <laughs> no, I, we're not experts we're, on we're anything. Not, we are we are transgender experts, apparently. It comes up a lot, the way. We talk about we talk about transsexuals a lot. I didn't bring it's it the, up. I, I think this is a very it's because it's a very current topic right now, isn't it? For you. It is when you're on. Yeah, I mean James it's only when I come on, sorry. James is thinking about getting pegged, so who knows where, where he's going with I was it. contemplating it for a moment now, yeah. You're like, well, Yannick is going to be gone for three weeks. Like, I can probably uh-huh. fill, fill in. Be yeah. filled in. Like be I said, in. guys, I was just thinking of chasing the ultimate high, and apparently it doesn't exist, so maybe <laughs> I shouldn't. Uh, What is the... Okay, we'll do, like, two more. Uh, How do you guys... How do you guys prioritize? Well, no. What's one thing you would change about the world? James, oh, do you know, you're, like, the philo- you're the philosopher. Unfortunately, the thing I'll change about the world is the, the amount of people on it. Why? There's too many people. That, on it. That, that's that's a, a dangerous. Such a, such it's a, a dangerous myth. No, it's, it's so true. No, but that's it's so a, true. That, that's it's such so a, true. It's such a myth. No, it's not. It's not. Do you know how many? Do you know how much dude, empty, dude, there is, em, empty area there is in the world? Yeah, it doesn't matter about that. We're still overpopulating the areas we are populated. It's, yeah, it's a mess. We just need a better. Opinion. We just need a better system. We don't have to kill half the world. I'm not saying kill anyone. I'm saying if I could change anything. I'm not saying that something they, they feel pain. I'm just saying. Planet. I'm saying yeah, if but... something was different, if something was different, there would probably be one, probably one third of the amount of people on this planet. Yeah, but why wouldn't you just say instead of that, you could just say, I would just spread out the population of the world. Because I think those people, I think those areas still need to be untouched, for a world to be healthy and for a world to be have enough nat- nat- nature and enough untouched territory that it has to be that way. I do think the world's overpopulated. That's just me, but you know. Hmm. Well, I think that's a general, con- I think that's generally agreeable, right? It is overpopulated. And, and you'll, and you'll feel it with the suffocation kind of levels that happen in, in areas like, like Britain, 
like how fucking overpopulated it is in these small areas. Like you can imagine here, where you've been, you'll be like suffocated. You'll be like, what the fuck is this? Jay, I actually went through this of a month looking up uh, population density per capita of like different cities. And then if you go to like Blang- Bangladesh and like those kind of places, mate, it makes mate. England look like fucking barren. Yeah, yeah. And I find it already like tough here. Like, okay, look, oh, wait. Yeah. Okay, look, this is what we got. Oh, look at Asia. Fuck. Yeah, but look at how wow. much em- empty fucking land there is. Like, look at the. Well, this is all desert, first of all. No, look at in look at India and. Yeah, this oh, is re- yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah. But you know what? It's not really. Uh, but I, I, I still, I still, I just, I just believe that one of the biggest problems is that there is just too many people populating this planet. Like, and if that meant I had to go as well, fair, so be it. Uh, I don't yeah. know. If, I don't know. Okay, you so don't have to. Agree. That's the whole point. You don't have to agree. That's just yeah, the main I thing. I, I, I think that would help. <laughs> yeah. Because you got to think everything comes with it. The amount of, you know, I don't know, like the uh, amount of fucking pollution, the amount of wastage, the amount of that all comes from the amount of people. The, the one thing, of... the one thing I would change is, and I don't know the answer to it, so don't ask me the next follow up question. The one thing I would change is the way uh, decisions are made for countries. Like I would change the electoral structures and somehow rid the world of corrupt politicians. Because I think that's the ultimate the ultimate. They would problem. probably all be gone if we took down most What's of that? the people. They'd probably be gone anyway if we got rid of loads of the population. Yeah. I just yeah, that's what I think the crux of the problem is, is most of the money is being used for things that people don't need or don't want, and it's being sure. used for selfish reasons. And then they just fuck everybody else. Yeah, I feel like you had no need to define corrupt politician. I feel like just well, saying politician is sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's just redundant. Um. Yeah, if I could, you know what I would change? I would to. I would find a way for there to be a news source that was just honest. It didn't mm. matter. It didn't matter what side of the political divide you were on. Just a, yeah, a new, one fucking news source that everybody could go to that could be like, yes, these people are the authority. Everything is think, fucking fucking true, and that's the end of it. You don't yeah. think something like that is possible with like AI? I well, don't you have like you you have like a no, but I'm saying that would be the only way where you could have like a legitimate AI. Say just for the sake of argument, say it was was kosher, legit. That'd be the only way where you'd be like, hey Siri, what happened in? Actually, fucking. Serious. Yeah, the the problem is the, um, the problem is the people creating the AI. Yeah. Right. Unless the AI created itself, and then you're fucked. Then we're gonna end up with Terminator. And you're fucked. And up, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I listen. I. I, I think, Skynet. Yeah, I, are gonna fuck. AI. AI is gonna fucking take over. I promise you. I just got a thought. I just. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think. I think. I think. I think I'm gonna be dead before AI becomes a problem. I didn't hear that. It wasn't loud enough. Sorry. Um, ben, I think AI is rapidly is concerning. Do you know that they had the there was an issue with one of the uh, chatbots on one of these uh, websites or wherever it was? You know the chatbots you talk to to get answers. It started a irras- It started changing its rationale and it started to become um, uh, vicious and it started to become anti-human and they had to shut it down. That's just an early sign of how machine is thinking for itself. I promise you, it's yeah. fucked. But, but I mean, before it becomes a problem, I think I'll be dead before that happens. I hope we all are. <laughs> but then my son will, my son will probably be right around my age and be like, "Ah, oh, fuck." John, 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 John Connor, <laughs> John Connor. Yeah, I would, I would try and, I would try and abolish or some sort of control on social media or who's allowed to be on social media and allowed to have a fucking voice or there has to be some repercussion for being a cunt online something like that that's censoring speech though yeah you should have you, you shouldn't be allowed to just say whatever the fuck you want to whoever you want that's without a sound you should you should but be prepared to get a fucking backhand for it yeah you can well i'll send i'll censor your speech with my fucking fist if you say the wrong thing to me yeah, but that's you're allowed to do that, but then you have to pay the price. For no, it. I'm not allowed to do that because I'll get fucking also charges. Saying, and... So basically, you're saying you're allowing anarchy. You're like, you know what? You're just allowed to beat the shit out of whoever you want. 
Yeah. Well, so I'm allowed to go, because then I'm also allowed to pick this up and be a complete cunt and hide behind this. That's freedom of speech. That's bo- right. uh, and that's what I'm saying I would change. Oh, maybe this you is just said you. I'm not telling you how I would do it. I would just get rid of people being cunts online. I, I, imagine this. Uh, okay, imagine this. Imagine if mobile phones never existed and it's still the wired house phone. Oh, dream. Oh. Dream. There you go. Okay, Fred, there you go. Freedom of speech is allowed, but only face to face. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You cannot say shit to me. And you can say what you want, but you got to say it to my face. So we got. And I control. agree. I I think that is the right. To, I think that's how it should be. What if we said? What if we said the one thing we would change is we would get rid of cell phone. We keep the internet, keep everything the way it is, but we eliminate cell phones. So you have to go on like your desktop. Yeah, you have to go on a desktop. That would be a much yeah. better because then you. Think of the um also the uh level of um productivity that would be there. Yeah. Because you have to sit down and you have to be actually committed. Like to know that you're gonna sit down, you might as well spend time, so you might as well make use of it and do stuff. Yeah. Phone, shit, man, that shit fucks people up because it's just like on the fly, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's like it takes away from productivity a lot of time. Listen, as much but as I hate a... as much as I hate cunts online, I've had more videos made about me than anybody, I think. That I can, that I know that like there's friends with me anyway. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, I still think you should be allowed to say what you want. I agree, but there should be a consequence to saying whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, but then that that's a slippery slope, right? Because then if you start saying there should be a consequence, then people are like, okay, what's the consequence and who decides what the consequence is? Okay. So. Oh, so oh, good silence. You, I right. can say so. Freedom of speech is good, right? You can say whatever you want. Yeah. So why can't I do whatever I want? I can't just walk around punching people in the face. There's a there's a consequence to that because one's violence. So why one, can I? Because one's violence and one's not. You can't punch people in the fucking head, but you can. I could say, "Hey, you're a piece of shit." And it's I also there's also there's also laws against inciting violence. So you have to be careful. There's already laws there in place against inciting violence. But, yeah, pussies put those law in place. It's fine. No, but that's it. No, but I'm just saying, like, I think it's tricky because if, if if people start deciding what can be allowed to be said and what can't be said, then no, who dis- who I think you can those- say I think you can say what you want, but I don't think you should be allowed to hide behind a device. Oh, so your change is not censoring speech. Your change is... I just said, you can say what you want. I should be allowed to punch you. Face. Yeah, I should be allowed to punch no, you. No, no, at least at least be able to have... The, it should be have to be done face-to-face, in person. You can't... But that, that I might not, also I might, be resolved, I, wouldn't it? I might not react at all. There might be no violence. We might end up having a conversation. But at least you fucking said it to my face and not behind a computer or a screen or a mobile. But like you say, that that issue could be resolved to a degree if mobile phones were not in the picture because, again, it would take more effort than to go onto your desktop. and Because people, the reason people do this and cause fights and say horrible things is because of the ease of access. Because they can get up, they can grind your gears for very little effort, for very little time and get a really good response. Mm. If they didn't have the ability to put that out there so easily... Less people would do it, you'd have a drop off by like fifty percent, and then it'd be an easier world because people wouldn't be Fuck. fucking mugging each other off. The do you world know what I mean? Fucking place. It's just all. It's all just. Do you know what that that is the problem? Unfortunately, is that it's just all too available too quickly, too easily, and well, that's I think, that's probably the problem. I, I genuinely mean this. This has been the best thing I've ever done, which is get two separate phones, and this one has no social media on it. It just yeah. has. It's a phone book. It has my family and you on it, right? And then that's it. The, everything else is on that one, and then that one stays in the house, in the Work office. Work hours only. Doesn't come, doesn't come to my bedroom, doesn't come in. If I'm going out for a meal with my family, it stays here. Hmm. It's an interesting conversation, because I've kind of felt like this a lot in life lately, like with filming for YouTube. Yeah, I like filming for YouTube. I just managed to get 100,000 subs, so I've qualified for the silver thing. Hey. So I was, like, I was pretty happy for that. Congratulations. Yeah, I thought, uh, thank you, man. I thought that was like pretty cool. But yeah. at the same time, now I'm kind of like this, though, as well. I think resources like this, where you are informative and you help people that like need to, there's a lot of people that listen to podcasts like this that don't have a social side to their life because they, they, this is their social side. And I think these are great things. And I think they give a lot of benefit to people. I think me as a bodybuilder, like sometimes just filming training and shit, sometimes I actually feel pretty shallow. And I yeah. think, you know what? I don't like, I ain't got like, I'm not King Louis. I don't need to fucking show everything I'm doing. These people don't need that. They need something better, something more giving. So I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, 
I actually kind of refuse to film for YouTube unless it's going to be something that actually positively impacts some people and gives them some fucking. I, don't know, you know? I think it's I think it's the wrong way to look at it though because I think to you you have to remember to you you're just working out and it's shallow and it's a thing you do every day, but to them they're like, hey, I picked up a few tips or I like watching yeah. James train because it motivates me or whatever the situation, right? There is that, there is that, but it's also like I feel like. Um... When you go on YouTube and you see how saturated it is with people doing that yeah. very thing, yeah, like it, I'm already looking at a lot of these people. Like I hate Seb, but I look at them like shit is shallow. So it's 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 how I feel again, like about myself in some regards. I don't know. I just I just feel like there's better ways to spend my time and more positive ways that could like physically help people or like you know really help people than just putting myself on YouTube and being like, look at me. This I, is not the same. This I don't feel like this is that. I feel like no, this no, is no, very good because we're having these conversations and I think this is helpful. But I think it's, and I'm not trying to change your mind. Obviously, you're going to do whatever you want. No, no, yeah, of course. It's just, of course. I think it's an interesting conversation though because I don't, I don't think we see ourselves the same way other people see us. Mm. So to you, when you look and you're like, it's shallow, I think it's because you're viewing it from your lens. But I think when you look at a 20-year-old kid who's like, oh, James is fucking awesome, like, He's not viewing it as James just trying to show off. He's viewing it as he's getting a lot of inspiration uh, from it, right? So it's, ve it's, uh, very, it's very valuable. But knowing James as we do, there's also a lot more for him to offer than just what's in the gym. And oh. whilst there, there are other bodybuilders that offer a lot in the gym that maybe aren't as insightful as James is, and I probably – I'm not speaking on your behalf, but you probably feel like you can offer something more than just bodybuilding. For I'm sure, not saying, for sure. I'm not. I'm sure. not saying. I'm not saying that. Yeah. He should not taken away from. Yeah. yeah, I'm not saying take away from that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't know. I don't feel like it's. I just. I mean, obviously, everybody has their own view on it. I. I just don't see. I just don't view it that way. I think. Yeah. Every, I think every bodybuilder has their fans, and then obviously some crossover fans. Mm. And I think your fans want to see what you do on a daily basis, whether it be training. Yeah. Going, going for coffee, going for breakfast, whatever. And you know what? It's just I know, I know. It's just you know, it's just something that it doesn't feel rewarding. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it if you don't love it. It's like it's like, it's it, too, it, it, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have that sensation of 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 genuine. I don't know. There's something to it. Right, a minute, that I'm kind of finding. Um, I don't know what it is, but like this, this, well, like I say, the, the, doing something like this, I feel much more positive towards because I think some people will watch this and it will it'd be part of their weekly schedule. It keeps them in a good place and they hear some things they wouldn't normally hear or talk about. And I don't know that, that has a lot of more purpose to me. I think I've run out. I'll, I'll be honest. I think I've hit a wall with like what I've hit a wall with what to put out. I was just going to say that it's hard. It gets pretty repetitive with training. And too, I can imagine like, you were the same. I imagine yeah, you felt the same. Yeah, I did. And that's why I stopped. Cause I remember like I started a YouTube channel way the fuck back in 2009, maybe. Mm. And I think I posted on it for like a couple of years and then I stopped because it's, it's like, like you can only post so many. I didn't think it was shallow. I just, I felt like it was re like repetitive. I'm like, mm. you can only post so many leg workouts or back workouts yeah. or whatever. And then you're like, okay, yeah. I'm just being. That's cool. why I think what you've done with the podcast is great. Cause you're including other personalities as well. Yeah. What happens then is that you don't grow stale. It's like when you, you do the real body boom podcast and you actually talk to people about what they do, that opens up many, many conversations. And then this one, we all have a week apart or two weeks apart and come back in and talk. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just, again, this is just somewhere you're my friends and I just like chatting to you. And that's where I, my head's at the minute, just because we're talking about like social media and YouTube and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, th I feel personally like I've hit a wall and like I pay a videographer and then I'm almost like not even using the money I paid him. I'm like, I can't think of anything I want to want to film. I could film, but what do I want to film? I'm at a point in my life where what do I want to do and want to show, you know? Well, you know, but, but, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. I was going to just say that that's a similar thing to like, actors right when they're first starting out and then no one knows who they are they'll do every little film until they're at a point they're like no that script doesn't make sense to me i'm just gonna put out yeah i want to i want to protect what i put out and i want to be proud of what i'm putting out not just putting stuff out because that's what i'm supposed to that, that's what it is is that i want to be proud of what i put out yeah well listen yeah. i think there's another mm. side to youtube that a lot of people don't think about for some people youtube is literally like i'm just gonna put out what I do on a daily basis. And that's their YouTube channel. That's mm. all it is. It's like, I went and trained over here. I went and trained over here. I did a collab with this guy. I did a collab with that guy. That's my YouTube channel. Yeah. I think real YouTubers 
actually sit and plan out a script, an event, a something that can they can make a special video out of. Like yeah. if you look at a, what the fuck is that guy's name that uh, does all the different diets? I can't remember his fucking name now. He's a black hair. He's Jim Jim Shark kid. Anyway, this guy is one of these guys that just does all these different. I did the rocks. I did the rocks cheat meal. Like that's mm -hmm. a plan thing. Or or, mm. or I did. Uh, I did. I did no sugar for one week or mm. I did the carnivore diet for one month. Like yeah, these are planned out fucking things that are filmed for a consistent period of time that like make people want to watch. It's not just like I went to the gym today. I did train chest. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, a little bit more thought has been put into yeah. it. Yeah. I think that's a very important, I think that's important. I think that's what needs to be done more thought, you know, but it, but it, these, and it, these people are being rewarded for it. Right. Like, for sure, you get the views and you get the audience, and you can make monetize that you know you monetize. This is a kid I'm thinking about. I just want to show you guys because he he just always has some kind of like new idea. Mm. Uh, Will Tennyson, that's his name. So he's got two million subscribers almost. Uh, look at I ate America's banned foods. Yeah, it's all just like there's the particular it's topics all... to each video, and it's a variety. They're not even interconnected as such. Yeah, look, I trained like a bodybuilding pro for thirty days. Uh, yeah eat and burn 10,000 calories like it just it's all yeah. but it's all like if you watch the videos yeah it's done it's, to a very high quality as well yeah he spent like you know a week he's invested short. heavily into this yeah, yeah. but then invested. you know that's the difference that is the difference between a youtuber and then a mm -hmm. professional bodybuilder who is actually still active that's right because you can't be everything that's right that's right you know it's different for like Seth Rose who's retired like yeah. bless him like the guy's killing it. he's doing a great job but he can because he's no longer uh, you know, like we always said, pinned down by the actual professional bodybuilding. You know, he's created a great thing. And that's kind of like, I suppose I look at content like that and I'm like, this is really good, but you know what? It's not where I'm at. And I suppose in, in truth, I would just like to go and train. And if someone films it, just film it for what it is and for the truth so people can see the true me. Yeah. And if people want to watch it, they do. And it's not about numbers. It's just about me literally just, I suppose, uh, documenting my time as a professional bodybuilder and how I did it. That's it. Yeah. You know? Anyway, I've rambled on enough now, but appreciate it. No, no, time. it's, it's, no, it's, uh, it makes sense. It's hard. It's hard, man. YouTube's a hard thing to it, like, it, to keep fresh. It, 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 I suppose the, the conversation is this. It's just like, YouTube's just a sub, a byproduct, like not a byproduct, it's a small part of doing things in your life that make you feel proud. Like Ben said. Mm. And, it's, and that goes in all things you do, all business ventures, all whatever you choose to do. Like, I just want to, like, I, yeah, I just want to try and follow the path that I'm proud of. Mm. Huh? That makes sense. But that, I but I that all comes. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was saying, that all comes back to that little voice in your head when you lay down at night and you're like, you kind of have that, I guess, that confessional with yourself, right? Yeah. The little you weigh up the day's events and like, am I proud? Like, did I do everything that I wanted to do? Did I did I do that? enough today for me to say that I'm living? Yeah, you know? and then for did me I to did... for me to rest well and be like, that was a good, that was tick that one, that was good. Yeah. I don't, I don't ever want... feel like I don't ever feel like that anymore. That's good. That, no. Well, you you do feel like you did enough or not? No, I never. See, that's the thing. And then, but how, how do we change that? Do we ever change part, that? But that, that's part of the void I've, I've lost with bodybuilding. Like when mm. I know I have a business now and I have a podcast and all that, but there was a lot more purpose when I like the purpose was a lot more intense yeah. when I was bodybuilding. So I don't go Mate. to bed at night now thinking, oh, I'm really satisfied for all the work I did today. It's Mate, I could relate to you. I could relate to you again. I had a conversation with Jordan yesterday. Jordan is a very successful businessman. You could think that someone like that, like yourself, has enough going on that they can be proud. Like, well, you can be proud, but I mean, could be fulfilled. Not content, but fulfilled. Yeah. And he said the same thing. He said, that time I took away from training, when I went down in weight and I tried to focus on something else, I never felt such a void. The void is the word he used as well. Yeah. And it's just funny because I had this conversation yesterday and the way that you just worded it there, it just absolutely mirrors. Um, and only, it makes so much fucking sense. The only thing I can make sense of it with is, you know, when you're, running a business or you know the podcast doesn't feel like a business to me it just feels like fun but mm. when you're running a business all your days every day are different yeah and you're working with a team of people and a lot of things are not in your control 
when you're when, bodybuilding yeah when you're bodybuilding it's all you all day you, you check all the boxes nobody can stop but you there is going to do but there is a checklist in bodybuilding that can yeah. be completed every yeah. day yeah that's what there I mean. is not a checklist in, in your business. business because there's the ceiling is just like all the it's gone it's, it's, no, wonder there, it's right? no wonder you never feel that way because you just again you can't because it's out it's beyond it can well, always... the ceiling, but the ceiling in bodybuilding is just as high. Like if you think of the person who starts bodybuilding, and then you think of Mr. Olympia, it's it forever. Is. But the difference is what you said first was in bodybuilding. There's a a very small direct checklist. Yeah, I got to eat yeah. these meals. I got to train my fucking ass off, and I got to make sure I focus all day long. Blah blah blah. You check them all off, and when you nice. lay down at night, you're like, I did everything. Yeah, I you're on your everything. you're on your way. You're on your yeah. way. Yeah, because there is not there's nothing else you could do. Yeah, yeah, like every meal is measured, right? Every meal is to a gram, whereas in business, it's as much as you can do whatever well, you can to. And get you're ahead. relying you're relying on a lot of other people, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like those things also don't allow you to necessarily rest at ease, because you could do everything that you could possibly do, and you still not. Else yeah, might... and somebody else is not on your level as far as like intensity or like urgency. Yeah. And you don't end up getting things done that you want to get done. And then you got to go to bed feeling like, yeah, I did what Slap. I could. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, Jordan's right. There's a difference. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's great. It was a great, it was a great, like, I had lunch with him yesterday and we just sat down and spoke and it was, it's good to get that insight sometimes because you can mirror how you feel sometimes with other people. And again, like this podcast, a lot of people don't, they realize they're not alone when they hear some of the stuff people say. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most valuable things that come from doing, again, something like this. Okay, last question before we go. Cool. Uh, all the podcast guys go to a bar. Who has the best and worst chance of bringing a girl home pre-marriage? I'm the worst. I'm definitely not pulling a bird. <laughs> I, I, can, I can absolutely guarantee that I'm the one that's not pulling a bird. If it's pre-marriage, I'm for sure going home with somebody. They might not be over a five, but I'm fucking for sure going home with someone. Throughout <laughs> <laughs> the guy, you know when the lights come on at the end of the night, he's like, fuck it, you here now. Come on, let's go. My luck is not there for that shit. I guarantee it. Ben, you'd definitely Ben would be fun. Yeah, Ben's taking someone home. For yeah. Sure. Paul would. Like, I guarantee everybody would, because everyone's got a bit of a character to them that's like gonna be attractive to some woman or not. You know, it's going to suit someone. Someone's going to be like, yeah, guy, he's little and angry. I love that. He can fuck me. Like but no, 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 no. Guy, guy is the one Guy is the one that's out of a relationship with the whole group. Guy is the one that can't hold shit down. You've got a woman that... No, no, but I mean, but, but he can... For the one night, I'm not good. <laughs> you know, when you're trying to pull a woman at a bar, I don't even know where to start. How did you use to pull women at bars? I want to know that. I, I never have. You never <laughs> pulled a woman at a bar? I've just hoped that everyone's drunk enough to want to fuck each other. <laughs> Like I rely on everybody getting absolutely blasted, including me. And then did you ever try? Happens. Did you ever just try the shotgun method where you just ask every girl in the bar and hopefully? Oh, I never. Yes? Nah, man, nah. I've seen guys do that. They literally turn around. Just have, a, just have a clicker. Be like, around. okay, I asked you. I asked yeah, you. no, I, I never did that. I never did the that, percentages. I. Uh, I was a shy I, boy. The the dance floor was always my friend. Oh, you had moves. So your moves were the. But I, I would. Okay. That. I you would were get, quite. You were quite slippery, dancey. Look back in the day. Uh, I would get close, and and then it would get Grind close enough. There. Yeah. And then ah. fucking, next thing you know, we're home. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> the mating ritual. I couldn't talk. I couldn't. I couldn't talk. It was. It was. You do something. It was physique and dancing. That's where I got. Yeah, I've always relied on lifting. Like I've always said to you, I've always relied on just lifting and impressing and hoping that's enough. <laughs> that's it. Like, cause there's no, there's nothing else. This, you know. James is in the bar with a fucking dumbbell. Like, <laughs> I can't pull. I can't pull in a bar. I can't remember the time I've pulled in a bar. Honestly. Really. For shit. I'm that guy that if there's a punch machine, I go over and do that with a few of my friends and don't even talk to a woman all night. Like terrible. I'm really bad. Maybe I can impress her on the punching machine. If I can take her home. They never they were never interested at all in anything <laughs> I did. That's so bad with women, honestly. So bad. All right. Uh James, think about New York and Canada. Yeah, like just just what's up me, you boys? Those dates are just pester me, innit? Like it's okay. Just say you bitch, get yourself. You know we're not gonna pester you. Well, not pester me, but like remind me because I, I swear I I need some sort of. I'm going to talk to Yannicka. I'm going to talk to My brain Annika is about... bad lately. I'm forgetting everything lately. I'm going to talk to your manager and get her to book everything. Talk to my manager. 
Okay. It's the best way. All right, boys. Well, I had a lot of fun today, man. Thanks for yeah, coming on, shooting the shit. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, boys. As always. Okay, guys. We'll talk Take soon. Easy. Take care, wait, guys. Bye. Wait. We had a conversation on the last podcast about saying I love you before we leave. Who says it? We have to say it or not? We have to say it from now on. I love you. Okay, I love, I love you. you. I love you guys. Oh, I love you. Is that too intimate? Is there, is there like a, is there like that a cool way to say soft. love you, That's love you. James, I'm not getting yeah. a sex change. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya. Bye.